My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. Hallelujah. The prayer that have gone down here is massive. <laughs> Glory to God. I know your intensity is very high this afternoon, but um, tonight is the first, so we have to do a little teaching so that people will have understanding as touching what the depth of the emphasis that the Lord will be bringing our way is, and then the, the scope and magnitude of what God wants to do. It's my singular privilege this afternoon to salute the servant of God, the set man over this commission for affording me the privilege to be here this afternoon to share with you the word of the Lord. Can you please put your hands together for Jesus as I celebrate God's servant, Pastor Steve. I'm not seeing mama, but glory to God. <laughs> Pastor Steve and his wife, thank you so much for having me. Kanu, Kanu is an ancient city with a very high spiritual pedigree. For those that understand, they know this is a ground of very spirit in light and in darkness. And on the strength of that, it's important for us to consider the topic we are considering today and tomorrow. And I trust that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. I want to salute all the ministers of God in the house. Thank you so much for coming. We trust that the Lord will be blessing us tremendously in the course of this meeting in the name of Jesus Christ. Just in case you are expectant, put your hands toward heaven. I want God to walk with us in this first session in a very calm atmosphere because of the kind of things to do. Generation. The first thing he does is to put a paradigm shift in the mind. Because if the mind is not guided in the dark, everything. Just talk to Jesus, tell him to minister to you this afternoon. Tell the Lord to minister to you. There's a word of the Spirit that you need to hear. Else, even your prayer will not count. Your fasting will not count. Paul say, I bear them witness that they have zeal for the Lord. They are zeal or without knowledge. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Most of you are on fire. You are blazing. But let's settle matters of perspective this afternoon. to you for strength, for wisdom, for access, for insight, for penetration. Father, we ask that you bring us your word fresh even this afternoon to pierce through our souls and touch the very depth of our essence. That from within us, Father, an avalanche of your glory will break out to take over our worlds. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just stay, stay in that mood for one minute. One of the things we'll be fighting in the course of this meeting is the power of religion. Sensationalism is beginning to replace life and essence. The Holy Spirit wants to minister to somebody now. A 
But I want you to receive a ministration apart from sensation. Don't worry. Tomorrow I will come here with the garment of fire. Tomorrow will be a revival meeting. But today I have definite ambition to fulfill. Because your, your land is too volatile. You can't afford to manage fake in a place like this. If you are in Lagos, it's possible. It's possible if you're in Lagos. Not in Kano. Not in, not in Kano. Not in Kano. Not in Kaduna. Not in Meduguri. You can't manage fake. Here, if it's only the name of Jesus, you know it must be real. If it's only the name of Jesus, you know. Because your life will depend on it. Just lift your hands toward heaven. Ask the Lord to touch you now. You see, the Holy Ghost wants to minister to somebody. But you must test reality. You must test reality for yourself. You must test reality for yourself. There's a young lady here that you had an encounter with a being few months ago and that being came to you and told you the spirit realm is about to open to you that there's a journey ahead of you and since then you've been having encounters you've been hearing sounds and sometimes it's as if that being is walking with you in fact the reason you came for this meeting is because you are trusting God for an encounter you are the first person the Lord wants to talk to and minister to this afternoon. But if I jack the meeting up, you may lose out of what God wants to do. Precious Holy Spirit. If my visions are correct, this person is wearing something like a black shirt. I don't know. Precious Holy Spirit. I ask that you release the oil for that encounter so that there will be a quickening by your spirit from the left side of this hall to the right from the front to the back Holy Ghost touch that one now so that she will enter into experience by faith and be able to walk that which you want to do in her life thank you Holy Spirit touch that one now and let that activation begin to intensify. Let it begin to intensify. Let it begin to intensify. The prophetic gate opens. The prophetic gate opens. I ask for that partnership in the angelic to be quickened right now. The angel that brought that revelation of your spirit. Father, I release the atmosphere for that angel to begin the ministration now. In the name of Jesus. That's right. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, God is beginning to minister. But sometimes people are used to emotional things. They don't understand how to touch reality. If I came in with fire, this place would have scattered. But most times, people are not touched. They are only overwhelmed. They are only overwhelmed. And the angel is dropping the oil on the head of this one. Holy Spirit! The separation begins now. The separation begins now. You see, you are soon going to receive a bath of fire. Because I'm seeing fire beginning to drop on your head. And it's going to spread around your body gradually. 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 I kill the atmosphere so you will know it's not sensation. Because where this thing will take you, sometimes it will be in the mouth of the grave. And you will know how to invoke heaven. Invoke heaven. Invoke heaven. And heaven will answer. The fire begins to spread. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. The fire begins to spread. Because right now there's a partnership in the heavens. There's a partnership that begins in the heavens. A partnership. A partnership. A partnership. 
A partnership. A partnership. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Receive that education by the Spirit. Receive that education. Let it flow. 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 Help that sister. She's not the one. Let it flow. Let it flow now. Let it flow. Thank you, Lord. That that one may be touched with a coal of fire. That that one may be touched with a coal of fire. We want to leave sensation. We want to leave religion. Touch that one with a coal of fire. With a coal. I'm beginning to hear a shout in the spirit already. I'm beginning to hear a scream. A scream in the spirit. A scream in the spirit. A scream in the spirit. The trumpet. The trumpet is released. In the name of Jesus. I hear a scream. I hear a scream in the spirit. I hear a shout in the spirit. The trumpet. The trumpet. Flames of fire, 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 flames of fire. Everyone implicated. Lord, let your hand touch now. God is separating people. God is separating people. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Before we begin, there will be an empowerment. Before we begin, God is separating people. Somebody's eyes is about to open. You have been praying for the spirit realm to become real to you. Somebody is about to see a quick vision. And this vision you will see, God is going to show you what assignment He has for you. And you will find yourself leave this hall and enter a city a city around the west around the west and you will find yourself engaged carrying out an assignment that will eventually become the call of God upon your life father from the left of this hall to the right from the front to the back the ones that you have implicated by this utterance, I ask that their eyes open in the spirit now. Let them begin to see. Let them begin to see. I know you are not used to this. <laughs> Let them begin to see. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. A veil is about to be lifted from somebody's eyes. And instantly you will see snapshots. 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 It will come like sparks. Like sparks. Like sparks. It will come like sparks. This thing will create a faith in your heart that you can never doubt again all your life that you are called. The first time I saw a vision, I was seven years old. And the heavens opened. And I saw a man sitting on the throne. And then I saw a woman presenting a child to the man. And I tapped my mom to look. And it vanished. Even if you put it on my throat, I can't deny it. I didn't see it in a church service. I was not falling and screaming. I was, I was fully intact. And I interacted with the spiritual. Those dimensions are lost. The fathers go to teach themselves. They sit down. And then they open the Bible for four hours and when they are done they now stand up and they put their, their hands in the deaf ear and the ear open no, nothing is moving there is no atmosphere they see a cripple they say rise up in the name of Jesus the cripple rise up we are a people of atmosphere with no manifestation this is why we do priesthood everyone here eh, you can pick the mic now and in five minutes this hall will scatter but the hawk is scattering with the same people for six months. The one that is a smoker is still a smoker. The one that is struggling with masturbation is still struggling. The one that is struggling with immorality is still struggling. What the preachers will do is to drop the microphone and go and cry. What he needs is to cry. Because that was not how Peter and John did it. They walked to the beautiful gate and they said, Such as I have, I give you. And a triple rose. It was in the service they were celebrating. Outside was dead. 
What if you fall into the hands of a kidnapper now? What do you know to do that will deliver you? Imagine if you were going home from this program and then you were carried in a car of a kidnapper. What do you know to do that will bring divine intervention? At that point, there's no keyboard, there's no microphone, there's no sound. What will you do? The only thing that I'm sure will happen to you is fear. Because that's the only reality you have. If the angelic claim becomes your reality, that will be the first thing that will flicker. If the power of God is your reality, that will be the first thing that will flicker. I know a lot of you that speak in tongues loud. Ho, 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 ho. But when they fall into trouble, the first thing that strikes is fear. Their predominant reality is not the power of tongues. They've not known the power of tongues. They only know how to shout and impress people. And now we even understand human psychology so much in church. So you know where to preach, what to touch, and how to stimulate people. And then when you say, Hey! If I preach here for 5 minutes or 15 minutes, and I say, Holy Spirit, this world will scatter. You can't carry people. Because the emotional cord have been touched. Meanwhile, very few are really blessed. This is why we come back and say, no, how did these guys do it when they were preaching in the wilderness? How did they do it? That a man will enter a city and he will preach Christ and the whole city will be full, full of joy. Meanwhile, he was a deacon. What did they know? What did they touch? They touched reality. Can you pray to God and ask him to show you his realm? You know a lot of sounds that stimulate your emotion. I will assure you that the same thing you feel, there is a music in the world that you will hear and you feel the same thing. The difference is location in the spirit. It's not emotion, it's location. You may be hearing a song and you are crying. You will be amazed that if you heard Westlife or you heard Celine Dion, you will still feel the same sensation and cry. You may have a sensation and fall down and you say, the Lord was upon me. You will be shocked that you see a celebrity performing and you will still fall down the same way you fell in church. The difference is reality. is location in the spirit. This is why I'm no longer under pressure. See, I come for meetings. Sometimes you are coming because you are so choked with body. You can't even preach. The first 30 minutes you are releasing body and the horse scatters. You can't even teach again. Meanwhile, you leave that place, the people say, one man of fire came, one man of fire, but after six months, nothing changed there. The church is the same way it was. People say they are on fire. You came for a fire conference, and then you minister to a church of 35 people. After six months, they are 35. Nobody caught fire to even win one soul. Every fire ended in the hall. People literally scattered. The church even ran on deficit because they needed to buy new chairs. Our priorities are wrong. We don't know that what we are doing is a business of spirits. Men are only participators. We are participants in this game. This is not our game. It's a game of spirits. You are only participating. So you need to know how it works. If not, you will be here having feelings. And you will have a whole lot of feelings. But you will not have reality. And the worst thing is when somebody is dying in your house. Maybe it's your mother. And then you come and speak your capital letter tongues. And then the more you speak in tongues, the more she dies. Then you will know that something is wrong. Or you wake up, you feel a sharp pain on your chest. And then you speak in tongues. When you speak in tongues, you go and lie down. After three days, it will become worse. When you open your eyes like this, you will see it everywhere will be white. You are in the hospital. You fainted. They carried you to the hospital. <laughs> they carried me. When you judge these things correctly, you will tell your emotions. You will say, wait first. Wait. 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 What, what works in this kingdom? What works? <laughs> what works? I began to examine the words of Jesus. Jesus said, if you love me, I thought he would say, cry and have a feeling. He said, keep my commandment. Uh -uh. I now discovered there is no emotion in love, in the spirit. <laughs> you see, they, these things work differently. What you see in the natural is a different reality in the spirit. That you are feeling something and you are, oh, you will be deceived until the day there is crisis and you run and you saw five people with cutlass. You will not know whether it's the name of Jesus you should call or it's tongues you should speak. Meanwhile, you are the prayer champion in church. You pray in tongues, everybody is falling. Now there are people with matches. That's when people should fall. But unfortunately, they, 
the more you scream, the more the matches will be coming to your neck. Because the ones that fall in church just made you feel you are a man of God. The ones that will fall when they are with matches will save your life. Priorities are wrong. You may be seated. Now I've succeeded in stepping them down. I can sit down. You know, when I came first, <laughs> what I want to teach you is too important. I cannot afford you being in cloud nine when I'm talking. You may not hear me. You'll be carried away by the language. You say, hey, so, hey, I was hearing his message. Now I've seen him. You will not hear what I'm saying. And when we come to a place where the lives of people are threatened, we come down. I was in Portacourt. As I was talking, people were screaming from the beginning to the end. That one is Portacourt. What I'm contending with there is a beast of lust and pleasure. It's an immoral spirit. So I know what to do. In five minutes, I can deal with that matter. But when you come to a place where there is power of astrology, you come to a place where there is power of intimidation, the spirit of death and vengeance, you can't afford to play. The powers that rule this realm, they walk from the heights of the heavens. The men that determine the direction of the civilization in this plane, there are people that can regulate the operations in the realms of the moons and the stars. They can alter the seasons and they can change the possibilities that are factored within your topography. They know what to do and they will cause the sun to smite a man that has no understanding. So when you are walking in a plane like this region, you need to have understanding and you need to know how to mobilize your advantage in the spirit. Because that's what a lot of believers don't know anymore. If you call Christians together and say, when was the last time God spoke to you, you will be shocked. In fact, when you are in church and God speaks, or you see a vision, and then you say it, you will be amazed that more than 50% don't believe. They will be like, did he really see what he's saying? Or maybe, okay, maybe he's feeling like something like that is happening. They don't believe. <laughs> you don't know where we are. We are an endangered species. Believers are lacking. We are scarce. There are few people now that have access to the realm. In the days of Eli, the Bible said the word of God was cast. So Samuel came and said God spoke to him. He took Eli, the high priest. He took him three times of reporting to know that this could be God. This guy was sleeping in the tabernacle. But a boy heard the voice of God and the priest could not discern that it was God talking. He had to come to him three times before it occurred to him that hey, this thing could be God. Oh. He was the high priest. That's why a man sees an angel. He said the, the Lord, an angel of the Lord is moving here. More than 90% think he's just talking. Because it's no longer a possibility in the Christianity that we practice. Meanwhile, in the days of fathers, of the fathers, they say be careful because you may entertain an angel without knowing. It was natural for angels to break into their compound. Now, even in church, it's hard to believe. We know a lot of emotional things. We know what to do to feel. But we can't touch the realm of life. As we begin the course of this program, towards the end of this meeting, most of you will be able to create spiritual possibilities for yourselves. You'll be able to create spiritual possibilities for yourself. So that our meetings are not reduced to people falling down and scattering chairs. And then loud volume. Let's know the things to look at. Let's know the things. I've traveled around this country. I have prayed virtually in every state in this country. I have met youths in their numbers. Nothing is happening. If you are privileged to talk to young pastors, you will discover that a whole lot of them are either into one addiction or the other. Either masturbation or immorality or lust. And they've been like that for many months. And they've attended all the meetings you know about. It's high time we come and shut down sensationalism. And tell people what to do in order to separate their soul from the power of corruption. You'll be amazed. Many people who are genuinely zealous for God, you see them in all the big meetings. 
but their soul is in bondage. Many people saying a lot of big spiritual things, patterns, alignment, dimensions, gates, portals, realms. But if you ask them what was the last instruction God gave you, they don't know. Meanwhile, our growth is in the direction of instruction. We come to church, we, we psych ourselves, we psych ourselves, and then people are, oh, oh. <laughs> Meanwhile, even in our immediate family, the condition remains the way it is. I want to share some things with you this afternoon. God's servant, he said, priesthood and influence. So, I will share some things. All this thing I'm doing is salutation. So that I will, you will rest. You will rest. Don't have any expectation of me. That's what I'm trying to do. Rest. Rest. Jesus said, I have many things to say to you now. He said, but you can't receive it. How be it when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all realities. So sometimes people have many expectations, but they don't have what it takes to receive. So it's not about big man of God. How many of you here have seen all the big preachers in this country? Most. You've seen Apostle Arome of Sai, you've seen Apostle Joshua Selman, you've seen Reverend Chris Akilome, you've seen Bishop David Oedeko. How much impact does it have in your life? How many of you here have fallen under the anointing? But things have not changed in your life. So it's high time you learn spiritual truth and practice them. I traveled around. I pursued every anointed man. I got most of them to lay hands on me. Nothing was changing in my life. In fact, when I met Apostle Romeosai, I came like this. I told him, I am a seer. Meanwhile, when he held my hand, he shook his head. You know why? I was light in the spirit. I was light. I was like feather. I didn't know why every challenge that came my way threw me down. Every challenge. Today they say fear. I am among them. Those who are afraid. They say lying. My tongue was keeping in line. Oh yeah. We were doing. See, every challenge you know threw me down. Meanwhile, I was a seer. Now, there was nothing wrong with the ordination. What was wrong is that I had not engaged process in order to gain stamina in the spirit. So he held my hand. He said, ah, ah. He said, you are light. You are light. He said, by the time you enter the first phase of your call, I will tell you. Meanwhile, I was a quoter of scriptures. I quote scriptures without thinking. As I'm standing here, I would have quoted 30 scriptures already. Everything I say, I back it up with scripture. Everything I say... But my secret life was thinking. I had no faith in anything. So we come, we talk. We were orators. So the tongue was already oiled. But there was no strength and stamina in the spirit. Even my family was being manipulated and maligned by the devil. We couldn't change anything. But I came to him, I say, I am a seer. Most of you here are called. We are not arguing it. But there are things that if you don't know and engage, you will wake up one day, stand in front of the mirror and you see gray hair. Then you discover you have not started fulfilling destiny. But you are already an old man. You will remember the last Christmas when you were in primary five. But the next time you check your birth certificate, you are 45 years old. Your brain can retain everything that happened to you 25 years ago. So you thought it was yesterday. Until you check and then you do all the makeup, but the alignment is not the way it used to be. And then when your birthday approaches, you check, you now discover you are 43. You will say one day we will happen, things will happen. And then you wake up one day and then you saw that the guy that you were teaching in catechism is now on every B board. Then you check, you say, wait, what is happening? That's when you discover that even that catechism, you are no longer relevant because you don't know the updated version. (laughs) 
You see, we are young people. We are young people. So let's calm down. I know there's been a lot of move of power. There's been a lot of prayer. So I can afford to play. I can talk like this for 32 hours. Then use 5 minutes to fly. I know where my wings are in the spirit. But you need to learn how to stand. I heard Bishop Oedipo many years ago. He said, you can love somebody to the point of giving the person your life. But you can't share your bread with that person. That's why you will see your brother dying. You have more than enough oxygen. But it's not for share. That's how spiritual things are. You can breathe in a bucket, in a container and give him to money, but the thing is not for share. Every man is entitled to his own. So this afternoon, I want us to consider the subject of priesthood. You will are for me. Okay, give me small volume now. Give me small volume. Did anybody see a vision? Is there anybody that saw your eyes open, you received a knowing about what God will have you do already? Before I forget. Is there anybody already? Your eyes opened or you had a knowing about what God will have you do? You, passed, you, you saw a vision about what God will have you do? Is it personal? Meanwhile, what I also run now is to show us an experiment of our own spiritual strength. You know, if Pastor Steve comes up and jacks this place up, you will be walking in the economy of his own spiritual radar and having spiritual experiences. And you will think you are, you are growing. That's actually an advantage that you entered because of his labor in the spirit. If I jack this atmosphere up, most of you will have many encounters. Most of you will begin to touch the energy level we are operating from. But you can't live by that. That's why I allowed you all to ascend by your own energy level. Very few of you touched anything. But by the time I teach for one hour, 30 minutes, and I ascend, and I open the heavens, most of you here, you will feel the power of God, literally. You will have spiritual experiences. That is not your realm. That's what most of us have enjoyed for long. But when you say, drop the microphone, let's pray, you will discover many people don't have prayer stamina. You say pray, they will never have any spiritual experience unless a man of God comes up and jacks them up. You are not growing. Every experience you should have under a man of God, you should be able to cultivate it so that you can create it for yourself. That's when you are saved. And this is one of the reasons we are going to teach you priesthood this afternoon. You've been here for long, so I wouldn't want to. Thank you, Father. The hour has come for you to instruct us by your Spirit. As we look upon the Scriptures, Lord, we ask that the scales of ignorance will drop from our eyes and the Holy Ghost will bring us into realms of spiritual awareness. So that we can lay hold and maximize the things that are meant for our greatness. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our world is fractured. Our world is manipulated. There are a lot of entities that are influencing possibilities in this realm. A lot. God is sovereign, but His rule in the earth is not sovereign. The sovereignty of God is perfect in the third heaven. But on earth, there are many governments manipulating the tides of spiritual possibilities. The extent to which the spirit 
can influence the patterns of the earth realm is to the degree that they can even violate your soul and your ordination because the earth is fractured in John chapter 9 Jesus showed up a city and he saw a man born blind and his disciples asked him he said who see that this man was born blind Jesus said nay what is responsible for this man's condition is not necessarily a sin. They said, is he his father that sinned? He said, no. Is he his mother? He said, no. Is he the man? No. It is not a direct effect of sin that have put this man there. He said, but I must do the work of him that sent me while it is day. Listen, Jesus came to contend with another government. That man was not guilty of sin necessarily. His father and his ancestry did not plague him because of their sin. But there is a power that can manipulate human possibilities. The guy's eyesight was taken from him before he was born. He was innocent, but he was a victim because he is in this world. This is why every believer must rise up. Because the warfare of life, you didn't choose it, he chose you. And he didn't seek your permission. You found yourself in it. The guy was born innocently, but he was blind. What did he do? Nothing. He entered into a battlefield and he had no advantage. Until Jesus showed up, there was no hope for that child. That's how the destiny of many people are truncated. Because they are not aware that we are in a battlefield. There is no portion of scripture that suggests that life is from fair. The best that the scripture will attempt to show you is that you are in the middle of a battle. Paul will tell us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I did not ap apply for any warfare. Why would you come addressing me and then you begin by telling me that I wrestle not against flesh and blood? What do you mean? When did I choose the battle? When did I get implicated? I was not consulted. Manipulations in the heavenlies. If they had consulted me, maybe I would have chosen the path of peace. Because in battle, even the guy that thinks he has won loses something. Have you seen me soldiers return from battle? As mighty as the American army is, when they return from battle, sometimes people come without their legs. Their limbs are cut off because there are every time there is a battle of necessity, there must be a loss. How come the battles of life choose you without consulting you? Because the reign is fractured. There are other entities that have authority in this realm. And these guys come with an ambition and agenda. Jesus gave us the manifesto in John chapter 10 verse 10. He said, the devil cometh not but for to kill, to steal and to destroy. Who are the people he came to kill? Who are those he came to steal from? Who are those he came to destroy? Are they the angels? Is it the heavenly host? It is you and I that are in this world. That's why the Bible said there is an evil day for every man. But woe unto the man that is of weak strength. Because he says if you faint in the day of trouble, it means your strength is little. Your strength is small. So life in itself is not lived until you understand how to build strength and to mount up with wings. So that you can draw energy from the realm of your advantage. Anybody who does not know how to draw strength and advantage from the supernatural is an endangered species. You can bear the title of a believer. You can have offices in the body of Christ. But if you have not known how to maximize the spirit realm, you are an endangered species. Because we are in a battlefield. Imagine if Kanu was in a riotous condition. And they said the only way to survive is to give everybody a gun but you don't know how to use yours even the least adversary can bring you down that's the condition of many believers we think we are exonerated because we are believers we think we are exonerated because we bear the title to Christian we think we are exonerated because we are church leaders we are leaders of fellowship these guys have no respect for titles when they come to you, it is the energy you emit that makes the difference. And these things don't just happen. They are consciously created. Many of us are living without 
exploring the supernatural. We are living without taking advantage of the things that are meant for our good. The devil is happy when we live as ignorant beings. That's why Paul said, he wished that we be not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. And he said, concerning spiritual gift, that not one of you should be ignorant. Those are two things that Paul emphasized the danger of ignorance. If you are ignorant of the powers that manipulate this realm, you are in trouble. If you are ignorant of your spiritual advantage, you are in trouble. You need to understand the forces that contend against your destiny. And you need to understand the forces that are, are, are made available for your destiny. Else, you are in trouble. Nobody is saved because he's a Christian. Nobody is safe because he's a believer. Everybody that is safe is safe because he knows how to enter his God's zone. This is where spirituality begins from. Spirituality is not a title for a few people. Spirituality is not a system, a religious system for a few people. Spirituality is a life of advantage because a man knows his God's zone. How many of us know our God's zone here? You'll be amazed we are few. That's why the job of counseling has become a, a, a mess. People are not disciples. They don't know what to do. In the midst of crisis, they run to people to tell them what to do. But that is not the design. That's not the design. Brother, you are a pastor in this place, you are a preacher, you are an apostle, you are a prophet. That will not save you. Do you know how to enter your God's zone? This is the subject of priesthood. I'm just waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting to know the things I can say now. So that somebody will not somebody will not be thrown off balance. Kadosh Kadosh Elohim Elohim We worship you You don't have to be an apostle in order to win in this life. Success in life is not a function of titles. It's a function of spiritual understanding. What do you know? What do you know? This is the crisis of our generation. We say a lot of things but we have mastery in nothing. What do you know? You are in Kano. What if you were going home and there is crisis? What do you know? This thing is not about going from one program to the other. What do you know? You have been a Christian for 10 years. What do you know? Preachers are under pressure to wow people. So we come, we show people what we can do and what we carry. But the people we are talking to, what do you know? The Bible said he gave some to be apostles. He gave some to be prophets. He gave some to be evangelists, pastors and teachers. Not for themselves. He said for the perfecting of the saints. For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. So that they can come into what? Full stature. Everyone that sits under the apostles. The teacher, the prophet, should become a reflection of the Christ. You cannot sit under a man who is called and you are not becoming like God. The idea is not the glory of the title. The idea is not the benefit of the title. The idea is not even the advantage of the anointing. The idea is to equip, is to equip, is to equip. We are in crisis, but there are no people to stand. When God needs an army, all we have are church members. Help 
heaven is looking for an army. But we are glamouring over church members. It's a plague. Most times people are careful because they don't want to embarrass the pastors. They don't want to embarrass us, the apostles. So the calamity they are going through every day. We come and we stage manage everything as if all is well. And the people are crying in their hearts. Even the testimony, before the testimony comes, they are screamed. Vetted at the background in case the testimony will invalidate what we claim to be doing. The people are crying. If we allow people to say, if you have something to say, come up, you will be shocked whether we are still in ministry. Any doctrine or any teaching that doesn't teach you to take responsibility for your life have only set you up for a futuristic destruction. It doesn't matter what you are doing now. The devil will wait for you to ascend. When you have gathered all, then he will wait for you in the future. What are you taking responsibility for? What have you become because you are a believer for five years? What have you become? This is why sometimes I come for program, I feel we should just pray. You have a very intelligent message. People have heard your messages, they are like, how does this guy know these mysteries? How does he know these things? And then you are coming for meeting. Everybody is coming to hear mysteries. They want you to talk about patterns in the heavenly. Meanwhile, their life is in crisis. Somebody came to me to church with clutches. He is going back, he said, oh boy, this meeting is a powerful meeting. No. And he is still on his clutches. The guy came, he is a puppet in the hands of an immoral spirit. He is going back from that same powerful crusade. The fair lady he saw by the right, he has looked at him three times, at her three times. The lost is still there. But he will say, Oh boy, this meeting, this evening, no be sporty, no. They have lost understanding of essence. So sometimes I wonder where we should continue teaching or we should just be praying. You know, in the days of the father, they will call fathers, they will love themselves and just pray for three months. For sanctification. Let God purge their soul. Now for us, sanctification is a doctrine. So you quote five scriptures for sanctification. And then you go and declare that I'm the righteousness of God. But in the days of the fathers, they were more concerned about experience. So even after reading the Bible, they go sit down and they pray for months for God to purge their soul. Meanwhile, in our days, we have the doctrine in our head, but our spirit is lean. So even the principalities in the territory, they are not moved. We will have one meeting and we will have 30 apostles. Hey, Mo, Shaka! This one comes up to display his own arrogance. This one comes up to display his own excellence. This one comes to display his class. Nowadays, the principalities don't even come for our meetings. You know, those days when they gather in meetings, they will anoint some witches and send them to distract the men of God because they know that the height they will hit in Zion, if they touch those cords, it will affect their thrones. But nowadays, we don't even ascend. So they don't bother coming for the meeting. They will just wait for you. Finish from the prayer meeting. When you finish on Friday, come, come. As you are entering the hostel, the first, the first chat you enter on Facebook, you enter back into immorality. They are not moved by your meetings. Then when we leave the meeting, they are just waiting by the corner. They are not threatened by our tongues anymore. Because we don't do business in the realm of God. We are talkers. So the guy comes to talk. He gathers his language to impress the people. He knows what he will say. So that the people can. Ooh, they are marveling. They are marveling. Who is this? Who taught him these things? Meanwhile, he doesn't touch the, the wave of the spirit. He can't touch the embers of life. Sometimes when we come for meetings, we should repent. The garbage is too much. The garbage. As I'm going to talk priesthood now, if I begin teaching now, you'll see some people doing like this. Yeah, you know, uh, this is what we do. This is what we do. This, yeah, yeah, actually. This is what we, some people are even judging this atmosphere now. Hey, there's no intensity. What is... Okay, man, I was thinking that... Uh, <laughs> I've seen all of it. My brother, if it does not translate to transformation, it was a waste. We waste hundreds of thousands, take money from people I see for programs. 
but nobody is changed. In the days of the fathers, they knew what counted. I was told that the crusade where Billy Graham gave his life to Christ, he was the only person that walked forward. But many years later, more than 43 million people will be saved because one man, that crusade is more important than most of the crusades we run in a year. We have lost, we have lost understanding of priority. I didn't come all the way to Kano to impress you. I came so that there will be a paradigm shift in your soul. I came to show you what you will do every day that will change the story of your life. I pursued sensation for a long time. I pursued men for a long time until I understood that the thing that changes men is the things they commit their lives to. That's why they were with Jesus for three and a half years. One of them became a son of petition. That's Jesus. It's not Apostle Arum, I'm talking about Jesus for three and a half years. They could not amount to anything. They saw all the miracles. They saw all the signs and wonders. Those are the things we run to crusade to see. We see all the miracles. We do like this. Ten cripples ride. They saw it. But they were nothing. Until Jesus came back and he breathed on them and opened he their understanding that they may understand the scripture. They have to go and dig into the spirit for themselves. It's what you do for yourself that will change your story. Responsibility in this kingdom is inevitable. You can't bargain it. You can't negotiate it. That's how it must. That's how it has always. And that's how it will always be. Irresponsibility has robbed us of our destiny. So we run with titles. But we have no tangible experience. Pray in tongues for one minute. I'm trying to find my bearing. I don't know what, where to start from. I am, I'm just... Hush. I wish, I wish God will help us this evening. I'm trying so much so that I don't impress somebody. I'm trying so much so that somebody will not come and say, Ah, he met my expectation. I'm trying so much that by all means I will shift your attention from me to yourself so that as I'm talking you will be judging yourself. And after you leave this meeting, you will forget that anybody like Apostle Mike ever came. But you will say, I was here. Now I am here. Hello here. Hello We worship you. In case there's a challenge presented before the Lord. In case there's a challenge. There are many things you can't tell anybody. Present it before the Lord. So as we advance, as we advance, you will deal with those matters in the course of this meeting. You will deal with those matters. You will deal with those matters as we advance. Yeah. 
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. In the precious name of Jesus. You may be seated. clearance now to say some things. I have clearance. So I can say some things now. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 to 4. Let's begin our Bible study from there. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 to 4. Let's begin our Bible study from there. This was Paul trying to give us a narrative of the eternal purpose of God. The portrait of the gospel of Paul was completely revealed in the book of Ephesians. I don't have time to open the book of Ephesians and explain the book of Ephesians. But from Ephesians chapter 1, Paul began to give us insight into the narrative of the eternal purpose of God. He traveled deep into eternal past and then he carried it into eternal future. Everything that God had in mind when he began the project of creation. Welcome. Paul went into eternal past and he gathered information and he ferried us through time into eternal future trying to explain to us the definite and deliberateness in the heart of God when he began the project of creation because it's possible for you to appear in time and because you were growing up seeing the cloud you didn't settle down to contemplate the wonder it is for the cloud to hang in the atmosphere you know if you showed up into this world as a full grown man you may think, if you see the trees, see the stars, you know, see the cloud and everything, you may faint. But the thing is, you started growing up as a child. So you got used to this thing before you knew the power that will be required to hold these things in their courses. The same applies to the faith that we have today. A lot of us just started going to church before we knew anything about the faith. So we grew up as adults. We got used to religion, but we don't understand the faith. We don't understand what God was embarking upon when he began the project of man. So Paul had to pause for a while. And then Paul began to talk to us by the spirit of wisdom and revelation. What the father had in mind when he began the project of creation. And in the book of Ephesians, Paul took time to give us a very clear painting of the migration of God's wisdom as touching the creation protocol and the role that man has to play in it. So in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, he said, Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. In verse 4, that's where the body of my emphasis lies. He said, according as, his, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. Paul said, before the world was ever created, you and I were already ordained to have a place in God. And he said, according to the design of God, 
we were supposed to be holy. The word holy is not the word purity. The word holy is the word separated unto. The word holy means to exist in a class of your own. So Paul is saying, according to the design of God, he created us to be separated unto his own class. That means man can only find meaning in life when his totality is defined, governed and inspired from the realm of God because that is the blueprint of our ordination. He said, but something happened. The only way we can be without blame before him will be in the next verse. That will only be in Christ. Now, you will read that scripture in the hurry and you will think it's the same progression. Meanwhile, the gap between verse 4 and verse 5 is more than a century. Because in the beginning, the necessity of our interaction with God by Christ was not there. Christ became relevant because something happened to the world. According to the design, it was our ordination to be separated unto God. That was the design. But something happened eventually. So it became impossible for us to be one with God except through the verse we call Christ. Now, why was Christ necessary? At what point did Christ become the only basis by which we can interact with God? That is what I began by telling you today that our world is fractured. When Adam was created in the garden, Adam didn't need Christ. Adam could have fellowship with God. Because the design was what? Before the foundation of the world, we were created to be what? Holy in Him, in love. But something went wrong. So it's no longer possible for man to interact with the Father. The only way man could have fellowship with the Father was through the verse we called Christ. And what happened is what necessitates most of the things we'll be talking about today. Because if we don't understand the scope of what has happened, we will take priesthood for granted. And any man that takes priesthood for granted has no future in this kingdom. Because the world is not the way it was in the Garden of Eden. Something has gone wrong. Something has changed. It's no longer possible for man to just wake up and have fellowship. Meanwhile, according to the writing of Paul, it means the meaning of life is not in breath. It means the meaning of life is what you produce on account of your intimacy with God. That means we are designed to procreate from our interaction with God. The same way a man and a woman comes together and then you see a child as a product of their intimacy. What we call life is supposed to be the product of our intimacy with God. So when you look upon a man, his life is not judged by his stature. His life is not judged by the biological processes. His life is not judged by the oxygen on his nose. His life is judged by the quality of what he's bringing out on account of the quality of his relationship with God. So when you look at a believer and you cannot see a dimension of God, it means that person is dead. He is breathing but he's dead because there is no offspring. It's just like two people in a relationship. They are married for many years but there's no offspring. That marriage has no purpose. They will keep trusting God unless their intimacy produces something. So man's relationship with God is designed to produce something. When you look upon what is produced, then you say this man is alive. That is why the Bible said they that live in pleasure, they are dead even while they walk on earth. So the guy has everything he needs in life. But the Bible said, from the economy of the divine, what happened? He is dead. How can a man be dead while he lives? Because according to heaven, he is living for pleasure. So there is no quality of relationship with God sufficient to create anything. That's why I began by asking you, I say, what do you know? What has been created from your life since the day you gave your heart to Christ? You can brag and tell people you are a Christian. Heaven is not moved because you are a Christian. Because man was not created just to bear a name. Man was created to represent God and to bet his dimensions on earth. The reason heaven will look upon you and say you are relevant is when they see the things that are produced from you. Paul began to tell us that the only way our life can have meaning is if we are separated unto the Lord. Separation unto the Lord that produces something that is tangible. 
and has an implication on earth and in heaven is the, is the proof of life. That's why the Bible will say concerning David, he said, after he served his generation, according to the will of God, he rested. That's the man that lived. So when heaven comes to check you, they will not check your identity as a Christian. When heaven comes to check you, they will not check your identity based on your fellowship. What came out of you, if truly you had a relationship with God? When you study the story of the patriarchs, the Bible tells us definite things that they produced and on account of what came out of them, all of them were numbered in the hall of fame. All of them prayed. All of them fasted. All of them gave. But not all of them made it there. For example, Adam was the first that was created. So if being a patriarch is a function of who came first, Adam's name would have been first. But Adam did not appear on that list. So that you came does not count. It's what comes out of you that will appear in Zion. Adam, the first man that was created, did not appear when God began to name men. That means it's not enough for you to be born. It's not enough for you to be a Christian. When men are numbered, you will be numbered side by side with what you produce on account of your relationship with God. Adam, first man to live, his name didn't appear. No wonder Jesus came and said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. That means in heaven they prove that you are a man is that you are praying. If you are not praying, you may be an amoeba as far as heaven is concerned. But so long as you are a man, there is something in heaven that they will check that an indicator that this one is still an original man. He said, men what? Ought. Always. So a man who does not see prayer as an everlasting responsibility and engages it always, heaven may not see him as a man. So you may come and say, all of us, we are suffering. Lord, look upon us. They, they, when they come, they will check. We are men. They don't find anyone. <laughs> You say, how can a man be suffering like this? Heaven will check. He's not seen any man. Because what? If there's a man, the proof in heaven that there's a man there is that prayer incense should be ascending to Zion. You know, people think that prayer is just about asking God for bread and wine. No, 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 no. Prayer is an economy in the spirit. Economy of validating your existence. A man who has no prayer in his constitution, as far as heaven is concerned, is not existing. That's why they say they that live there for pleasure. They are dead while they live. The Bible said in Revelation chapter 5 verse 8. He said the prayers of the saints. They ascend to heaven as others. And they are stored up in golden vials. So every time God wants to relate on earth. What he does is that he fetches from prayer. Because prayer is what gives him the legality. To superimpose his government on the earth realm. So when men of prayer vanish from this earth, God will no longer have the right to manipulate the earth. The earth will become a property of the devil. The reason earth is preserved is because there are what? Men on earth. And if there are men on earth, then prayer must ascend to heaven because men ought always to pray and not to fail. And the moment men begin to pray, something happens in heaven. Incense begin to rise as others. The fragrance of our prayer is what gives heaven the splendor of heaven. God created heaven in such a way that the only way heaven can be aromated is when what? Prayer ascends to heaven. You don't know what to do when you pray. When you pray, what you do is that you add color to Zion. And those prayers, they don't just only give aroma to Zion. God will gather the prayers together because those prayers are scarce commodity. The same way the voice of God is scarce on earth. That's how prayer is scarce in heaven. So the Bible said, the prayers of the saints, they are stored up in golden fires. There are many things God cannot do in canoe unless the heavens are filled with prayer. The earth is fractured. There are many governments. Satan, Leviathan, Apollyon, all of them have separated all the spheres of this world because the idea is to make every being a creature after their kind. The devil cannot create, but there is something the devil can do to manipulate your constitution so that you can become a being after its own kind. The only way a man can retain the originality of creation so that he can be the image and the likeness of God is what men ought always to pray and not to fail. A moment that dimension is lost, you may think you are a man, but when heaven comes to check you, you will be an agent of seduction. 
So heaven may not see you as a man. Heaven may see you as a seductive agent. The moment prayer dies, you will discover that you are a lying agent. So when the devil comes, you will partner with lying spirits. When heaven comes, you will partner with seductive spirits. When heaven comes, you will partner with the spirit of fear. You will partner with the spirit of death. The only way the purpose of God can survive in this world now is when what? Men pray. When men pray. This is why priesthood is the highest level of relationship with God. There are six levels of relationship with God. The first time you were born, on account of the fall, you were born into sin. So you are a slave. You have no inheritance. Every sinner that does not have Jesus today is what? A slave. Because according to that scripture, the only way you can have relationship with God now is what? Through Christ. So that guy is an alien. He doesn't connect with Zion. Why are you in Nigeria today? Why can you make demand in Nigeria? Because you are a citizen. What makes you a citizen of Zion now is what? That you are born of Christ. So everybody in the world is a slave. The moment you know Jesus, you migrate from that level of relationship. The first level of relationship is the level of a slave. Having no inheritance in the kingdom. Then you come into Christ. And the moment you come into Christ, God begs you. But God brings you deep. He brings you deep by first of all beginning to teach you that this realm you are entered is a different realm. So Jesus said in John chapter 3 from verse 3, he said, except a man be born again, he can't perceive. So you are not just born again into a family, you are born again into a kingdom. So God will of necessity teach you afresh. Because where you came from, you see those of us that came from Lagos, our ancestors, this is what they said. Now you have come into a new kingdom. He said, let no one in Zion say I'm sick. You are not used to that culture. They taught you fear all your life. So the moment you are sick, you run and you tell your parents you are sick. In fact, if you don't tell them, they will deal with you because the sickness will aggravate. They are not used to the power to change things, so they want to walk in caution. Meanwhile, you have come into another kingdom. And this new kingdom you came into, they say what? Let no one in Zion say, I am sick. How do you change your language? How do you change your thinking? So God will enroll you into the school of discipleship. So the moment somebody is born again, he first becomes a disciple. But see the reason why our system now is ruptured. There is no more discipleship. The guy gets born again today because the pastor is in need of a young vibrant man. In three months that guy becomes assistant pastor. So he's leading prayer with a garbage that he carried from the world. He's leading prayer with his arrogance. He's leading prayer with his pride. He's leading prayer with his lust. What the pastor doesn't know is that he has not been separated from the other government. So when that guy is praying, he's emitting energy into the congregation. Every prayer you pray for the people before you came, he diffuses it. Because Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 2, 8, he said, for that we love you. We are affectionately, affectionately desirous of you. We did not only teach you the gospel, we imparted the substance of our soul. This microphone I'm carrying, because you are listening to me, the quality of my soul is imparted onto you. That's why you can go for a crusade, you will come back and you go and fornicate. If the guy on the microphone is a fornicator, what happens? The substance of the soul is imparted. So when God brings men into the kingdom, the first thing he does is what? Discipleship. He begins to teach you the way of the kingdom. That's when you will discover that eating every day is a sin. It's not a doctrine, it's concentration. That government becomes real because except a man be born again, he can't perceive the kingdom. So, before you used to eat, you wake up in the morning, you just start eating. Nothing is wrong, you are enjoying your life. Now you want to touch food and the Holy Ghost moves in your heart. Say, no, no, you don't eat breakfast. No, 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 no breakfast. You may not understand it at first, but what is happening is that you are coming deeper into the sphere and the realm of God. If you don't travel on this corridor, you will be a Christian for 35 years and they will make you an elder because you have white hair, but you will not be a ranking entity in Zion. Your words will be light. When you speak, demons will not respect it because in Zion, they judge you by the energy that you emit. The guy forbids and violates the protocol of discipleship. Before you grow in God, you must walk through these ladders of a relationship. A servant to a disciple. God will teach you what to do with your tongue. That time you go sit down, you talk anything you want to say. Now it becomes the challenge. 
you did not lie, you did not cause anybody, but you sat down and you spoke with somebody for four hours and the Holy Ghost is grieved. You sat down, you watched a movie for six hours and the Holy Ghost is what? Is grieved. And then you went to check the scripture and then you saw in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30, it says, grieve not the spirit. Grieve not the spirit. So for you now, watching a movie for four hours is what? A sin. Discipleship has begun. See, this is a part of knowing God. There are a lot of great people walking around now. They come, they tell you, you are born again, so you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Anything you can manifest, you have no proof that you have it. The proof of ownership is manifestation. That's why, see, you may think you know something, you don't know it until you can demonstrate it. Paul said, oh, I don't want to digress. Let me just follow this line of thought and then carry us gradually. I've seen a lot of young people. I want to use contemporary example so that you understand me. Paul said something. He said, therefore, Romans chapter 12 verse 1. You don't begin a scripture with therefore. It doesn't make sense. Therefore what? What are you building on? What Paul was talking about in Romans 12, I beseech you therefore, is what he built from Romans chapter 1 to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 1 to Romans chapter 8 is a revelation of what God did for the Gentile. The reason you and I are justified in Christ and we have become citizens of Zion is what Paul captured in Romans chapter 1 to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 9 to Romans chapter 11 is what God has done for the Jewish people. Teaching the Jewish man that is not part of the commonwealth of Israel because he's born in the natural as the son of Abraham. God has migrated. Becoming a descendant of God now, you have to be an, a spiritual Israelite. So you must come to the faith. So Romans 1 to Romans 11 is God packing to humanity to bring them into relationship with him. That is when you are born into the kingdom. But from verse 12, Paul began to show us the second layer of salvation. The layer of discipleship. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren. That means these are born again people. These are not sinners. But everything from Romans 1 to Romans 11 is the finished works of Christ. Enjoy it. But if you want to go deeper with God, he said what? Therefore, I beseech you by the message of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. This is where the journey of priesthood begins. See, priesthood is not just prayer. I will show you what priesthood is when I reach the fifth level of relationship. Priesthood is actually spiritual legislation and spiritual litigation. Spiritual le legislation in that everything God wants to do on earth cannot happen unless a priest rises. God may want to visit Kano today. He can't do it until a man rises. That's priesthood. As sovereign as God is, he wants to visit a family. He cannot until a man rises. Did you study about Cornelius in Acts of the Apostles chapter 10? He said, your prayer and arms giving have risen up to heaven as a memorial. But God could not visit him. He now sent an angel to tell him to go and call Peter. That's priesthood. That's what we call legislation. The reason a lot of believers death comes to your family every three, three years to carry people because there's no priest. There's nobody that will move the hand of God. God has provided covering for your family, but nobody to administer it. Priest to the spiritual legislation. A man who can stand and enforce the will of God. There are few. There are few. Some think it's just prayer. They pray, they have no result. Because priesthood is a process. This is where it begins from. You present your bodies as a what? A spiritual sacrifice. Holy and acceptable. I thought they taught us that the moment we are born again, we are acceptable before God. He said they are brethren. But he's telling them that their body needs to be present holy and acceptable. It's another layer. All of us can be accepted in God, but not all of us can carry out God's responsibility. A man whose body is not poured cannot do the service of the priest. God will purge you, he will cleave you and will break you. You will find yourself some of you is food, food that you eat like this. Food will become a sin for you. There are times you can't eat anymore. God will tell you so immediately it's 4 p.m. you can't eat again because there is a walk you will do in the night. 
that food will become a hindrance to the move of God in your life. So God will tell you, I have x-rayed your DNA in the spirit. And every time you eat by four, you are useless in the night. So for you, the law of the spirit is that you don't eat at night anymore. If you will be relevant in this kingdom, you will not eat by four. We don't know why revival is not happening. Everybody is preaching revival. Revival is not preached. He's not preached. He's born. Revival is born. You bet it. We don't preach revival to happen. We bet it in the spirit. God will come into our congregation when we cry for 10 years and then he raises 12 intercessors. And then these 12 intercessors, he provides a chain of prayer for them in the night. And they need to run that chain for 3 years unbroken in order to raise incense enough to heaven to download the avalanche of God. And then one of those people is not purged. His time schedule is 3 a.m. in the morning. Every 3 a.m. a beam comes and touch him. He wakes up by 3 a.m. He checks his tree. Tomorrow he wakes up. He's three. Next tomorrow he wakes up. He doesn't know that he's part of a chain of intercessors that have been ordained from heaven to bring revival. He thought it's just by coincidence that he's waking. He doesn't know heaven will be rigid. God can choose to frustrate his finances so that his focus can come back to him for that three years. For that three years, his business can crumble because there is a purpose in the heart of the father that is bigger than his ambition. For him to be relevant in Zion, he will not sleep for three years by 3 a.m. Because every time a revival is to take place, angels are mobilized from heaven and those angels partner with men on earth. That's why Joshua went to Jericho. God wanted to subdue Jericho, but there was no way. He saw an angel of the Lord with his sword drawn out. He said, are you for us or against us? He nay. According to the word of the Lord that might come, there is a commission from heaven that Jericho should go down. If your army partner with that commission, I am with you. Every time a revival is to be born, matching orders are given to angelic being. So your partner in the realm of Zion taps you in the morning. He says, wake up, let's walk. And then you wake up, you do like this. Because you eat rice and beans and you cannot wake at night. That's why revival is not coming. The men that should bet it, they are asleep. He say, woe unto him that is at ease in Zion. Men can be cursed in Zion. Hope they told you that if you are born again, you cannot be cursed. You are only blessed. You don't know kingdom. You are not taught kingdom. He say, woe unto him that is at ease in Zion. A purpose of God that was hanging in the spirit realm for 100 years can be choked down by one man of appetite. He breaks the energy of the rank. Eleven other intercessors are faithful. But this one man must watch movie till 1 a.m. He doesn't understand the body in the heart of the king. The powers of heaven move on his account. But he's still in slumber. He's still in slumber. This is why before God brings us into depth in relationship, we must present our bodies as living sacrifice. Holy. It's not about the man that knows how to pray. It's the man that has submitted himself to die. Because in this kingdom, until you die, life cannot flow out of you. He said, God, kill it. And he make it alive. For the purpose of God to be born, death must first of all become your experience. The more you die, the more life flows out of you. Because life and death dwell in the same room. It depends on the orientation. Adam was alive, he died. But a man who is in God, he dies to become alive. That's why Jesus said, a corn, except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and die, it abides alone. We think revival is about our talents. So the guy that knows how to talk is preaching revival with oratorial power. He gathers two or three scriptures and he's talking about prayer. He thinks that will create revival. The guy who is a prayer man, he comes and he carries the mind. Ho, 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 kako, ho, 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 ho. He thinks it's that. Meanwhile, the energy coming out of him is an energy that demons are light upon. The angels that partner with him don't identify his voice in heaven. He's shouting, but his partner doesn't recognize his voice because he's talking from the vent of arrogance. He's talking from the vent of lust. He's talking from the vent of pride. The only time our prayer we have touch up is if we present our bodies as a living sacrifice. This is why God will kill a man that he has ordained. This is not doctrine. This is consecration. There's nothing you will tell John the Baptist about prosperity that will work. A prophecy was hanging in the spirit realm for 700 years. In Isaiah chapter 40 verse 1, he said, And I heard a voice crying in the wilderness, Prepare a way for the Lord. That season had come, but there was no man of sufficient stature. 
people could not discern. That was the time when the Sanhedrin had politicized the order of the priesthood. They had two priests. One was a political priest. The other was a man that ran the oblation. Their mastery was about the Torah. So they could recite the Torah. They were experts of the laws of Moses. So when they come, they cross their leg. You begin to recite Genesis to Exodus. From Exodus, they think that the move of God was something hanging in the spirit. But no man could discern. Only three men discerned in the whole generation that God was coming. And they committed their lives. The only way you know a man that is part of what God is doing, it is the degree to which his life is abandoned. The life of abdication is the secret of surviving in the days of transition. Man, you will see a man who was a celebrity. His shoe is 10 million. All of a sudden you see him wearing sandal. You think he's poor. You have no understanding. He has discerned the tides in heaven. He has seen the finger of God. He knows that a move is coming to the borders. And because of that move, he can go and dwell in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth. Only three men. The first was John the Baptist. The Bible said John was in the wilderness. Luke 180 until the day of his showing forth. He was the son of a priest. That guy had no reason to lack. Everything he needed in life was at his beck and call. But the only way he can be able to find out out of a million people that this one is the Christ, he need to cut away from civilization. So Elizabeth who had no child of the old age, do you know how much emotional tie Elizabeth will have towards John? Love and pampering. But John knew he had seen the finger of God. He knew that the only thing that will make him relevant in eternity was for him to be able to identify the Christ. So he was there. He was cooling in the wilderness. The Sanhedrin could not teach him. They knew the laws of Moses. The ways of God were captured in the Torah. But what God was doing, only men of discernment could find it. They said, and of the sons of Isaac. These were men that had understanding of the times and of the season and knew what Israel ought to do. It doesn't mean the Levites are no longer relevant. It doesn't mean the priests are no longer relevant. They will still be there reciting the laws of Moses. But the sons of Isaac, they will come and tell you that no, this season is not about salvation. This season is not about prosperity. This season is not about healing. God wants to purge his house. It is the sons of Isaac that will come in the midst of oblation and tell you no, the hand of the priest is corrupt. Let the whole camp go to fasting and prayer for three days. For those three days, they will shut down everything because these are men of discernment talking. Jesus was coming. Nobody could discern. Only John. And immediately, John separated himself. Because what? You must be a living sacrifice. That's why your father will tell you, as you are behaving like this, if you don't take that job this year, you will regret it. Oh, you went inside, your heart wanted to fail you, but you saw him that was invincible. The Bible says Moses, when he was come of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than the pleasures of Egypt, which were for his season. Why? Because he saw him that was invincible. They will threaten you that you are this day you will be in Canaan. We are moving to Lagos, but God told you that what I want to do in Canaan, your feet is planted in the fire. You can never follow that far unless your body is presented as a living sacrifice. This is where priesthood begins from. A man can journey and wander away from family because he has seen the writings. He has seen the writing. He has seen the writing. In Daniel chapter 2 verse 45, the Bible said, the king wanted to make Daniel the prince of all the realm. And Daniel said to him, no, make Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego me, I will sit at the gate. What has he seen? You think he doesn't know the power of political appointment. He knew that the day that he was in, only by priesthood will Israel be delivered. So in Daniel chapter 6 verse 10, he said, as his custom was, three times in the day, he prayed with his windows open. He was facing Jerusalem. Because God was marching towards Jerusalem. The only way he could break the stronghold of the king was by intercession. But you cannot do that unless you have first of all presented your body as a living sacrifice. Only John and two other persons discerned the season. So their lifestyle was different. That's why you graduate from school. They say you are wasting away. They don't understand what you are seeing. You are on a path of priesthood. The second person was Amos, the prophetess. The Bible says she lost her husband 
at the age of 21. And she gave herself day and night to prayer and fasting. Living in the temple until she was 84 years old. Are you okay? Your husband died when you were young. What are you doing in the temple? Prayer and fasting. When you look at... See, you cannot judge the quality of a man's life on earth. The plane of earth is too low. You want to know who is great? Ascend to Zion. See from heaven. That's why you will know the men that are mighty. The Bible said these men, some of them, they were sown asunder. They were destroyed. On earth, you will say they have no relevance. But the Bible said these men are too important that their name could not be mentioned on earth. Earth is too corrupt to call these names. It's in Zion when the saints are marching that you will know the men that are truly ranking in the heights of the heavens. Because they saw what heaven wanted to do. They sacrificed their life on earth. The kind of gospel some of us preach is not for everybody. It's for men that have a witness that they have a part to play in their generation. Because everybody that this gospel will make, will make meaning to, the Holy Ghost is already talking to your heart. A woman fasting and praying for 84 years. Is it because prosperity is wrong? No. The doctrine is correct. But her concentration was at banned her in the prison of prayer and fasting. That is priesthood. Legislation. You don't know what they were praying for. They were praying for the salvation of Israel. They told the Simon, the prophet, the moment Jesus was born, the guy was still praying. He was not aware. In the morning, he was praying. And suddenly the Bible says, Simon came into the temple by the Holy Ghost. The moment Jesus showed up, there was a power that carried him from where he was praying. And he came and he saw the boy, the little boy of less than nine days old. And he said, my eyes have seen the salvation of Israel. How do you know that? Those are true prophets indeed. When they prophesy, they can tell you that a scroll has broken in heaven. It's not this kind of prophecy we exercise our mind now. And you, you no, 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 that's babyhood prophecy. Go and read the book of Revelation. You will see the rank of a mature prophet. When a scroll breaks in heaven, that man will stand and tell you that in Jerusalem, this thing and this thing will happen. If you like, go and pray for 10 years. What he's telling you is breaking news from what? From Zion. That's a ranking prophet. They speak over lands and nations. Because a man that talks to a nation is bigger than a man that talks to a man. You can exercise your senses and give word of knowledge to a man. But you must have stature in heaven to talk to your family. You must have stature in heaven to talk to a nation. That's why we are prophets but our family is in darkness. We don't know what to do about it. Our country is in darkness. We don't know. There are no ranking men. There are no ranking men. Simeon, he came. He said, my eyes have seen the salvation of Israel. He said, now I can depart in peace. The reason he was alive was to provoke heaven until Jesus showed up. So the meaning of his life was his ability to stir up heaven until he, he reset the season of the coming of the Messiah. You, you are living for a government job. And you think you will count in Zion. When God comes and checks you out, you will be light. Even the princes in darkness, they won't bother about you. They can have one million of you in this world. It will not amount to anything. But when a priest rise, even head is threatened. Because priests have only one burden in their heart to see the will of God find expression. For that, they are willing to leave family. They are living, willing to leave jobs. They are willing to leave nations. The Bible said, Paul and Barnabas. He said, this be the man that have started their lives for the gospel. You are preaching the doctrine of Paul. You are preaching grace, but you don't know the life of Paul. Elohim, I don't know her. These matters are heavy matters. See, I was struggling for more than 30 minutes. I wanted to know if I can preach to these people. I wanted to know if your appetite is still about a good job. If your appetite it's still about graduating from 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 a, a Biro University canon and running to Lagos to get a good job. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to men that we walk on earth, but their head will appear in heaven as immortals. Follow us in Zion. You can't see them, you can't judge their life unless you check them out in heaven. You may see them with rag. The Bible said John only ate wild honey and locust bean, that he was dressed in camel skin. But when Jesus came, 
and the mortar thing came and he looked at John. He said, Of all men born of a woman, there is no greater than John. Of all men born of a woman, how can a man eat white honey? Who was dressed in chemistry? He didn't even have linear on his body. But when the mortar came, Jesus looked at him and he evaluated his height from Zion. His stature was greater than his own generation. Until that generation was weaned to John. They will say, In the days of John. If you were born that time, if we want to look for you in the lexicon of heaven, the book will be opened. The name of that book is John. Your destiny will be locked up in what? In John. In the days of John. Every man that lived, his name was chronicled in the book of John. So if you go to heaven and you want to find yourself in heaven, the only way you can find yourself if you were born the day John was born is to go and open the book of John. So the book of John is not the story of Jesus. It's the writings of the destiny and the chronicle of the will of God that men live in his season. Is it possible to rise up and say in the days of Steve, in the days of Enoch, in the days of Abraham, these men, they were gatekeepers of generations. They are mightier than men. Even while they were on earth, they were walking shoulder to shoulder with angels in heaven. John went to heaven. He was in the Isle of Patmos. They sentenced him from civilization. They didn't know that the man was a living sacrifice. For him, location is not a factor. You can collect his car. You can collect his account number. You can seize everything from him. The only thing you cannot take from him is the ability to stand in the presence. So while he was in Patmos, he said, I was in the spirit. I was in the spirit. You can pursue him from Nazareth. You can pursue him from Ephesus. But he has a location in heaven. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard a sound as of a trumpet. Every breaking news from heaven. Because he was in the spirit, he could go. And he was carried to heaven. When he finished, he knelt down to watch the angel. And the angel said, I am like unto you. Ah. On earth, a man had the rank of an angel. And then you, you are competing with Sister Agnes. Because she came, she was singing in church and doing like this. You have no wisdom. I want to be popular among the immortals. It's a waste competing with men. What does a man have? I find my purpose and by priesthood I zebo into it until when you want to look for me you need to go and find that angel that partners with me when you know the rank of that angel come and check me out that's when you will know me did you not read about Daniel he was in Babylon why do you think Daniel was the king considered to make him the president over all the realm in Daniel chapter 2 verse 3 because Daniel's colleague in heaven was in Jehovah you can't know Daniel when you want to find out who Daniel is, look for the power that backs him up in the spirit. Until you know the stature of Angel Gabriel, you cannot know Daniel's stature in the prophetic. In the prophetic, Daniel was walking in the rank of Gabriel. That's why Gabriel is the angel of mystery. Daniel was also a keeper of the mysteries of God. The Bible says, seal the book until after many generations. So a man has the right. He knows what to talk to a book and the book will be sealed. Carry it to Harvard and study it for 10 years. You can't find it. Because Daniel became a keeper of mysteries on earth. The angel that walked with him is a keeper of mysteries in heaven. Priesthood. They didn't teach you how to die. They only taught you how to receive from God. That's why nothing will happen in your land. All of us will pray the result will be different. The question is, are you a living sacrifice? Priesthood is deeper than prayer. It's life in the spirit. Elohim Adonai. The Bible will come and say, a man's value is not in the multitude of his possession. And then priests like us, we begin to function like creatures of time. God forbid that my motivation is money. God forbid that you value me by money. You can only judge me by the purpose of God in my generation because I am a part of it. I have a stake in what God is doing now. My voice will echo from Zion. That's why I will talk from Makodi. You will hear it in Canaan. I have a stake in what God is doing. I will die 
a man who doesn't know how to die, he can't live in the spirit. The part of the spirit, the part of life in the spirit on earth is the gate of death. The gate of death on earth is the part of life in the spirit. Until those appetites die, you have no place in the ranking systems of Zion. We value ourselves now by church titles. I beseech you, dearly beloved, that you will present yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Say, this is your reasonable service. And in verse 2, he said, and be not conformed to this world. So you want to know how to present yourself as a living sacrifice, the man is deciphering it for you. Be not conformed to this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. He said, then you will be able to prove. This word prove is the word demonstrate. The only time you have a spiritual understanding is when you can demonstrate it. And even demons fear people who can demonstrate. Jesus said, The prince of this world cometh to me and findeth nothing. If the devil comes, are you sure you will stand? <laughs> he comes and says, I am this, I am that. The men that preach those doctrines have not told us the truth. Go and check their lives. Some of them fasted for years until they were hospitalized. Some of them meditated on scripture until angels appeared to them and touched their tongue. And then you will think it's about quoting scriptures. Present your bodies. This is where priesthood begins from. Present your bodies. God will purge you. That's where you can be honorable. He said the standard of the law standeth sure. They that name it the name of the Lord must depart from iniquity. He said, For in a great house, in a great house, there are many vessels. There are many vessels here, but few are important. In a great house, there are many vessels. He says, Some of gold, some of silver, some of wood, and some of earth. He says, If a man purges himself, if a man purges himself, then he will be meet and useful for the master's service. It's not a doctrine for babes. So you enter the second relationship with God when, when God makes you a disciple, He begins to teach you the ways of the Spirit. When you have begun to gain mastery in these things, then you go to the next level. God now makes you a friend. You know, when you begin these things, it doesn't make sense. The Holy Ghost will come and say, Don't eat for 40 days. And then you are saying, You say, Thank God. God wants to show me something. And then you pray for 40 days. You see nothing. What God wants to show you is the nature of Christ. That the nature of the devil have clothed. So you will keep doing that fasting without vision. But something will happen to you. Before then, they provoke you. You say, You they mad. You know me. You are full of pride. But now, Somebody provokes you and you look at the person, you don't feel it. You don't feel it. You don't know what has happened. You are a disciple. God walks himself into you from inside out. So God comes again. He says, Don't eat in the morning. And then you have run that schedule for three months. And then you are wanting, you have not had any encounter. No angel has appeared to you. The worst part is that every time you go for fellowship, and then somebody said, I was praying yesterday and light appeared from the wall. You now go and lie down, you begin to cry. You say, when am I going to see light? What you need is not light. God is transforming you. Because the power you will host can only be possible when you are transformed. He said, when God shall build up Zion, then he shall appear in his glory. We are in different classes in this kingdom. We are all equal by salvation. But when it comes to matters of government, we are different. Because everyone is an agent at different level. Hope you know all of us are Nigerians, so we are all equal by citizenship right. But if you talk now, Buhari can speak and you'll be in prison for life. Equal citizens, different responsibilities. What is the quality of your transformation? To what degree have you died? The Bible says God is not unjust to forget your labor of love. 
I don't want to talk about influence. I just want to show you what priesthood is first. Is tomorrow I will show you about influence. I will teach you how to partner with the angelic. So that you can do territorial matters. There is something you will enter. And overnight, you will become an influence in this generation. See, forget. People are just proud. Some think uh, influence is by being on Facebook. So in 24 hours, they have five posts. And they maintain that schedule for four months. The more they are uploaded, the more people become bored. I used to be a fanatic of Facebook. I uploaded any thought that came to my mind. I will upload, I will see 15 likes. 12 likes. Until I shut down and began to follow God. And when the spirit eternal told me, I will begin to announce him. Even if I put post online, the least like is 1k. I will upload something, I will see 370 something shares. A little writing. What has changed? I have not become more wise. But the spirit support has come. The power of priesthood. You can't do business territorially until you have a spirit support. This is why we first of all die. Most of your friends will come. They will see you. They will say, Hafa. They want to snap with you and upload so that people will think you are equal in rank. They prove that you are equal. It's not the pictures you snap. They prove that you are equal. is the impact of your work in the territory. Both of you will talk. One of you will talk to 15 nations. Another one will talk to one local government. It's rank. The degree of death. I know a lot of young people. You can write something on Facebook. Joshua Selman will copy that and paste it. In one hour, you see 180,000 views. But you that wrote that thing, it will have 15 views for three months. It's not about novelty. It's death. It's death. This is where the angels come and they put a trumpet in your voice. And when you say hallelujah, the angels blow the shofar. Your hallelujah ended in this auditorium. But the shofar of the angel can drive away the armies of the Assyrians. This is why four lepers were walking into the camp of their enemies. But what the Assyrian army was hearing was a sound of chariots. The lepers could not even hear their own footsteps. But the enemy were hearing a chariot. What is the difference? Partnership in the heavens. A man who does not die to self, you will remain with your talent. And men will only clap for your talent. At most they will give you money. But you cannot shift the thrones of demonic princes. You cannot shift the thrones of darkness that hold the territory in captivity. Before we pray, we must first of all die. Because this thing is not about lingo. It's not about capital letter tongue. It's about the height where your voice echoes from Zion. Where are you talking from? That's why we have become beings of emotion. Because we don't know what it takes to die. See, when you begin to die, a lot of things will not move you. You can come for fellowship. People are doing blah, 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 blah. You just go to one quiet corner. Not because you despise what they are doing. There is body in your spirit. They can't even understand it. The guy is praying. He thinks it's about intelligent prayer point. Meanwhile, where you are, maybe somebody is about to be attacked by 10 p.m. this night. That's the body God was giving you around 4 p.m. When others are doing intelligent prayer point, you, you are already fighting for the life of somebody that is going to die by 10 p.m. So you are no longer a creator of time. You are now a creator of eternity. What will happen many hours, that body has come to you many hours before it happens. Because you are a partner now. The angel that was mobilized from heaven to create deliverance has partnered with you. 4 p.m. you are fit what will happen by 10. You don't even know why you are praying. You are ransoming their lives. A lot of people will come and say, hey, we get local, thank God, thank God. It's good to thank God. But the man that labor is, is not in Colossus. He's hidden by the cave with Paul. Hope you know. <laughs> Paul said in Colossians 4 12, he said, A Epaphras, a bond servant of Christ, laboring fervently in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Meanwhile, there were many pastors in Colossus that were preaching and things were happening. And they would stand on Sunday morning and do like this. And say they are anointed. They don't know that the reason the church in Colossians was prospering was because what? A papyrus. A papyrus that have died to fame. He has died to influence. He has died to the applause of men. He was hidden somewhere praying. 
and so long as he's playing in that corner the whole church in eternity will stand one man bigger than the whole eternity because he knows the technology of death we everything we do we want everybody to clap their hands that's why only the people that know you are the ones that know you you cannot go beyond the box of your immediate habitation present yourselves as a living sacrifice when God can count on you as a sacrifice then he begins to tell you the secrets of heaven that's when God will reveal to you the stories of eternity so you can come to a church they say come to Kano and preach and they were praying one prayer point but when you came from to came to talk to church in Kano you now began to tell them what God is saying in eternity about Kano maybe the time when the greatest persecution is happening in Kano you now came you are not coming to encourage them about persecution you now tell them there is about to be prosperity when they check nothing will look like it what you are casting is a news from heaven that's a friend of God there was poverty in the land until women were eating their children and when they called Elisha he came and he began to prophesy affluence that's a friend of God when they talk they talk from heaven you can call again and say this girl is a prostitute eh? everybody says she's a prostitute then you, you will come and when you look at the girl say oh you will discover she's a mighty woman of valor because what they are calling a prostitute she carries the spirit of Deborah but they can't see what they are seeing is manifestation you, you are seeing reality you are a friend of God this is why we preach the way we preach we may be talking what we are talking some people will hear us and say I leave those children they are just being arrogant after 10 years they will know no after 10 years the landscape would have been altered you know when we started talking like this some people came and they looked at me they said hmm all these boys, they want to talk like Apostle Aaron or Sir. <laughs> I laughed. I laughed. <laughs> I was very arrogant. See, I don't see anybody bigger than me. God broke me and matched me like this. <laughs> Until even me myself, I don't have confidence in myself anymore. So when I come to preach, I pray that God, that God may even give me utterance. Meanwhile, those days when you came, you came with grammar. As you stand, the first five minutes you are talking, the people are trying to understand. Because you will begin to cast a news as if you are talking a language of spirit. So the people will be like, they are trying to, you. See, when the patterns of the heavens are strayed upon the landscape, men of understanding need to align by the, see, you are talking. The people are like, when God marks me like this, I will come for meetings sometimes. People are expecting power. The Holy Ghost says, tell them about obedience. And I will tell them about obedience and I will give them the mic and go. As I'm going, I'm crying. Because some people traveled, they came to see the burning light. And that day, God did not let me. I had died. But that same day, when I spoke about obedience, that's the same day that 10 people will chat me and say, after that meeting, I didn't masturbate anymore. I would have come with my grammar and scattered everywhere but they would have gone back with masturbation but I understood how man, God raises men in this kingdom how God raises men in this kingdom is the way of death when you die you become his friend they say I'm talking like a pastor I love I didn't even bother because heaven bore me witness I came to remnant for Christ embassy I was palming my hair my room hotel was Reverend Chris we were talking lingo like Holy Spirit. Precious Holy Spirit. That's how we're talking. What's my business? If you have seen Reverend Chris, he's like an angel. That was, see, we were painting our hair. My hair was covered. I was only wearing double breasted suits. I had many white suits. And when you are walking, you coordinate yourself. And then you are coming to tell me I'm being like a pastor on your side. Are you alright? I didn't even have their time. When I entered Remnant, I, the man spoke. And when he spoke, I didn't fully understand what he was saying. But as he was talking, it was as if the window of eternity was open. And what he was saying is as if I knew those things before I was born. The echo was coming from my spirit. I didn't plan to go there a second time, but the power drew me. The power drew me. 
I prayed for him for eight months non-stop. I sowed seed to him continuously for eight months non-stop. And I heard his messages for eight hours every day. Because I just graduated from the university waiting for service. Eight hours every day. His spirit entered into me like a whirlwind. I didn't even know when my tongue changed. A point came, I didn't hear him for two years. Because I was afraid I would lose myself. Until God told me, your part is in him. And then a carnal man comes because he can't judge. They are talking like a postwoman. Until somebody died by the neighborhood of Remnant. And then me and my friend went and we prayed. The person became like ice block. They started crying. We said, shut up. We kept praying. There was a spirit of faith at work. We knew we don't have that kind of faith, but something came on us. We prayed until the person came back to life. The now said, oh, it has migrated from talking like the manifestation had begun to happen. A lady came, her leg was, was, was fractured at the knee. Three pastors prayed for her. She couldn't be healed. Until mama said she should come and meet me. And she came and just held her leg and said, ah, the angels are touching you now. And the power of God threw her from the hall outside the building. And she got instantly, she began to run around. When they saw manifestation, they now lowered their volume. Until God now came to me and said, I will begin to announce you. And then I removed five minutes of my clip. And it was in 17 nations. I can mimic talking like Apostle Arume, but can I put my messages in 17 nations? Until now, I can't even go for fellowship again for four months. I have been traveling since August. I have not spent 24 hours in Makod in the last 60 days. I, I had a tour of 18 days. I ended it on the 20th. I started another one on the 22nd. And I will continue like this till 9th of October. How did you do that? Did I tell you to invite me? I can come here and laugh and go back. People will be blessed. I have not preached. I have not done anything. Most people are already blessed. Do you think it's because I'm talking? A spirit is witnessing. The friend of God. You die. Then your immortal dimension begins to speak. You don't know what is locked on your inside. You thought you had a good voice. It's not about voice. The voice is just a sign that there is something about your life. The day you die, you may sing like this. And then a prophet will be born. Because you sang. So people will no longer hear melody. When you sing, you will activate their spirit. A healer can walk into the meeting. And because you sang, the healing anointing will come into the person's palm. And from that day, that person becomes an evangelist. Because you sang. When you die, your soul becomes a gate into Zion. And every time you open your mouth, God speaks through you. They didn't know it about the apostles. They beat them, they flogged them, they, they molested them. And they came and they said that God may stretch his hand through their hands. They know how things work in this kingdom. It is the way of priesthood. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. You will continue to be nothing unless you accept the burden of death. This is why the Holy Ghost will stay on that matter. He will never stop. Your own is pride. The Holy Ghost is there. Every time the pride lifts his head, the Holy Ghost will fight it. This is how we grow in relationship. Growing in relationship with God is not the ability to know the whole Bible. There are many Islamic theologians that know every three words in the Bible. They are like concordances. But they don't know God. You will come under a government that will break you. And then God will make you his friend. After they walked with Jesus for three years, he told them, you are no longer servants. Now you are my friend because you know the secrets of the kingdom. This is where you will come to the place of prayer and you want to pray and God overtakes you. You don't have school fees, you are crying. But every time you go to pray, God is praying for canon through you. And then when you finish praying this intense prayer, you come outside, there is no food to even eat. And then you say, Kai, I need to pray for uh, God need to open doors, open doors. You even went for meeting. Somebody's talking about you are supposed to prosper. In this kingdom, poverty is a cause. That is a very correct doctrine. But when you went to pray, your concentration, your concentration will betray you. As you lift your voice to pray for wealth, then you hear canon. Canon, Lord, when will you visit? When will you visit? You have become the friend of God. The secrets of heaven are breaking upon you and they have become capsules of bodies. At that time, you are bigger than yourself and your family. Because you have become the reason why God can have a stake among men. 
this is the way of becoming mighty because influence is first of all in the spirit a man that has no influence in the spirit has no place among men God came on this same subject matter and he wrestled with Jacob do you know who Jacob is? Jacob was the custodian of the Abrahamic blessing there was nobody on earth that carried the Abrahamic blessing only Jacob so God himself had no choice but to walk with Jacob yet God could not use him he could not be relevant imagine if you are the only believer in this world and then you think because I'm the only believer heaven have no choice you know those doctrines that are peddled everywhere they say even God now has no choice because I'm born again God, I don't. <laughs> go and read Exodus 32 he said we wipe out the whole Israelite and begin a new covenant with Moses how about the promise you made to Abraham he is sovereign a sovereign he is not restricted by his laws the laws are still there but there are higher realms a sovereign if God does something that you think is a violation of his law he is still correct I came here by flight the law of gravity was still intact I came in Boeing 737 that jet weighs more than 80,000 kg there is no way that metal can float in the air but there are laws. The laws of gravity will forbid that matter to ever float in the air. But if you engage the law of aerodynamics, gravity will still be there. But because aerodynamics has come, a matter that weighs more than 80,000 kg can float in the air like paper. Laws. God is sovereign. Don't be deceived to think God cannot do without you. You are a joker. This is why we commit ourselves. Even our salvation, we walk it out with fear and trembling. Priesthood is spiritual legislation. A man that God does not raise cannot speak for God. God is not looking for people to, that know about Him to talk to people about Him. God is looking for witnesses. People that have experienced His life to communicate Him. John said that which was from the beginning, which we have heard. We have seen, we have looked upon, and our hands have hanged. He said, That is what we are committing to you. And we are not teaching you something so that you too you go and say, He said, We are bringing you into fellowship with the Father. He said, Truly, our fellowship is with the Father. The idea is to bring you into the experience of God so that you can represent God. But you must first of all travel from a servant to a disciple to a friend. Then, God can place the seed of sonship on your life. Because a son is not just an offspring. A son is one that bears the responsibility of a father. The Bible said in Galatians 4 1, it said the heir, so long as he's a child, differeth nothing from a servant, even though he's Lord of all. You can be the only believer in this world, but you'll be a servant. He said, therefore the father, this is not a demon, the father places him under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Sonship is an investment to those who are mature. Sonship is an investment to those who are mature. You can be born of God, but you will be a servant. God himself will place you under tutors and governors until the time appointed of him. This is why many of us call ourselves names and many things but nothing seems to be happening. Somebody preached. You came and preached. Your own preaching is 10,000 times sound and more impactful than his own. But he's the one that the nations are calling for. That should educate you that it's not about intelligence in preaching. It's about communication of the spirit and life. Jesus said the words I speak they are spirit. They are life. We reduce the spiritual to the mundane. Excellence is important, but excellence can have no impact in the spirit realm. Sonship. In the Greek, there are three names Techno, Nephews, and Jews. Galatians 4 1 is a Nephews. He is the heir of God. But he is weak in understanding. He doesn't know how the kingdom works. 
So responsibility can be given to him. He may even come to a level where anything he asks for, he receives. So he has 10 testimonies every Sunday. And you say, hey, is it only Sister Anne that God knows? Sister Anne is a babe. What Sister Anne is praying for? Even if you want to, you can't pray for it. Because at your level now, God has the power to arrest your vocal cord. Even when you want to pray for money, God will forbid you. Paul was the one teaching people prosperity. But Paul was going to Jerusalem. He came to a city, seven men spoke by the Spirit and said, Do not go to Jerusalem. Paul said, I go to Jerusalem bound in the Spirit. So I'm not even going to Jerusalem because it's my choice. I'm a prisoner of God. He was teaching prosperity, but he was a prisoner of God. Because God said, You must witness for me before kings. Purpose became a government over his soul. You know, God wants to use you. You must follow this route. This is why things are not working. Don't be quick to start crying. Find out. Because some of the things you call crisis, they are actually syllabus in the school of the Spirit. But you have not discerned that you are a student in the school of the Spirit. And this thing has nothing to do with age. At the age of 17, David defeated Goliath. Because he was schooled. When Saul gave him his own armor, he said, No, this one, I'm used to it. He was schooled. God may walk on your tongue and school your tongue and place government there. Because everything you say, he wants to perfect it. That's your power. He said, I'm schooled in this one. At the age of 17, Paul left Timothy in Ephesus. He was ordaining elders in Ephesus at the age of 17. Who told you you are too young? You were deceived. Go to America. You see general overseers that are your younger brothers. People having master's degree at the age of 17. At 21, some of them are representing their country. Some of the courses that our professors leave Nigeria here to go and attend. The people that attend those courses with them are 21 years old. But when they come here, they say, elder, elder. But they go out there and they do meetings with 21 years old. Representative of the government of America. 21. You, you are 27. You say, uh, when we mature. Maturity is not a function of age. It's a function of yielding. The degree to which you yield is what determines the grace that will flow through you. Elohim Adonai. The true priesthood assignment begins. There are two dimensions of sonship in this kingdom. One is priesthood. Another one is kingship. The reason God will take you through this route is because matters of kingdom, there are warfares involved. If you are not built up, you will be cut off in warfare. And there is nothing God can do. Because the parameter for judging warfare is the laws of the spirit. So God will shave your excesses until you are able to walk in alignment with the laws of the spirit before he releases you. Priesthood begins after you have become a son. Legislation and litigation. I will talk to us about legislation and litigation tomorrow. Because what I want to share is heavy. For tonight, I want us to first of all take time and pray and contemplate on what we can let go for God. All we were taught is to receive from God. That's why the church is growing in membership. But citizens of Zion are few. All we are taught is the faith that receives, not the faith that gives. That's why we are growing in number, but our territory is in darkness. Where are the men that can die for the kingdom? They are not many. You will think if you come to Kano, you will find most of them, you are joking. They have learned how to live for themselves. 
Because all we hear now is self-preservation, self-exhortation, self-preservation, self-aggrandizement. It's all about self. But if that is all your operating system is made up of, it doesn't matter the height you get to, you will still fall. That was the undoing of Lucifer, the son of the morning. He was one of the most ranking cherub of glory in Zion. But all he knew was what? Self-preservation, self-exaltation, self-aggrandizement. The Bible said, Thou that sealed the soul, you are made of beauty and wisdom. He said, From the day of thy creation, thy covering were the finest of stones. The guy was covered with gold, with diamond, with jasper, with berry, with onyx, with sapphire, with kobunku. All the most precious stones, ten of them, were his covering. A spirit that God decided to clothe with crystals. And so when the guy shows up, he glows like the sun. He can turn and you will see a flash of diamond. He turns, you see a flash of sapphire. He turns, you see a flash of kobunku. Beauty. And the merchandise of wisdom was his constitution. The Bible said you were in Eden from the day of your creation. You moved to and fro in the coals of fire. Thou anointed cherub that covereth. So Lucifer was both a cherubim and a seraphim, covering the glory and walking in between the coals of fire. The coals of fire were supposed to be the infrastructure in heaven for purification. But in him was a wrong operating system. Self-preservation. Self-exhortation. So it didn't matter the height where he was operating. He said, I will rise to heaven. He was the governor over the first earth. He said, thou that weakest the nations. He said, the kings of the earth looked upon you and they married. A ranking being the only angel that the Bible ever said was anointed. God so much delighted in him that he said from the day of thy creation thy tabs and thy tablets were in thee. The guy knew the sound to create in order to create an atmosphere of comfort for God. So he was the custodian of worship and melody in Zion. He was the angel in charge of the mysteries of sound. Meanwhile, heaven is regulated by sound and light. He was the son of the morning and he was the keeper of sound. So he was like the angel of the heavens. That was why he thought he was greater than the Michael and the Gabriel. The keeper of sound and the keeper of light. These are the two major things that regulate heaven. Everything in heaven has light fused into it. And everything in heaven is regulated by sound. Lucifer was a keeper of sound. A reflector of light. The only angel that was called an anointed cherub. The only one that walked in the midst of the coals of fire. So he had intimacy with God. He could perceive the mind of God. He could walk into the heart of God and draw out inspiration consistent with what God desired by time. But his operating system was what? Self-preservation, self-exaltation and self aggrandizement Not too long, he said, I will ascend. A point came when he was no longer satisfied because it was all about self. And he fell from heaven. Even God himself lamented. He said, Oh, oh Lucifer, how art thou fallen? That was a wasted divine investment. If you are not taught the gospel of the kingdom, you and your gift will be a wasted divine investment. The gospel of grace is a revelation. Of what God has done for humankind. The gospel of the kingdom. Is what humanity. Owes God as a responsibility to do for him. So that his ways. Can be known among men. What can you lay down. On the altar. That's the value of your life. A man that gives his life. Will receive the life of God as an exchange. What can you lay down. Before we begin to scream and shout. Let's find out our stature in the spirit. You want to know the weight of a man? Go and check his offering. What can he give? What can he give? What can he give? A man who can give his own life is bigger than this earth. 
the Bible say, what can he profit a man if he gains the whole world and suffer the loss of his soul? He said, what can a man give in exchange of his soul? That means even the earth is not enough. You want to be relevant in the move of God. The first point of reference is the life of death to self. This is where the devil has gotten most of us. We are anointed, we are gifted, no doubt. We are called, we are apostles, we are prophets. But we are alive in self. So God cannot do so much with us. This evening, I want to make a call for men that want to give up their life for God. I know when you gave your heart to Christ as they called it, meanwhile what you actually did was to receive the life of God. Because you didn't have any life to give to God, you were dead. But after God gives you his life, he waits for you to commit it back to him. This is what Paul meant when he said, I am crucified with Christ. I live yet not I, but the one that died for me. The men that can really move this kingdom forward are the men that are willing to give up their lives. If we begin to talk about blessing, about gifts of the spirit, about impartation of mantles now, this place will scatter. But you can have the mantle of blessing in Dahosa. Have the mantle of Babalola. Have the mantle of Baelti. You will still be a slave in the hands of the devil. Because whoever you yield yourself, servant to obey, the servant of him you are, whom you are obeying. Most of our Deborahs today, they are still dancers in the club. Most of the Mordecaias, they are Yahoo Yahoo boys, making money. And the reason is because no one of us has this thing of eternity to cry and bring them back to the kingdom. What they carry in their spirit, if they hear a man that carries the same thing, when that man cries, they will hear him. Most of us, the reason we came into the kingdom was because we heard the echoes of lions. And we knew we were lions. Religion could not move us. All this ah, could not move us. We were people of reality. And the day we saw a man with reality, we gravitated in their direction. If Mordecai will come, then the Mordecai here must first of all arise. If Deborah will come, then the Deborah here must first of all arise. If not, our number will be depleted because our ranking men are still dancing in the club. What can you give? when you are not yet dead the God of commerce will become your God you will become a worshipper of mammon without knowing if tomorrow we will talk about influence and that tomorrow I will come as a revivalist but tonight is so pudgy it's so business that thing that has become a God come and drop it at the altar if you want your life to count in the next three minutes Come and cast your weight at the altar. That thing that you have hid away from God. That makes you pray. But still God has no authority over your life. I stretch an invitation. My Smoro told a story. He went to a city in Zimbabwe called Harare. And the king told him a story. He said there was a, a shepherd that carried sheep to the back sides of the wilderness. And one day as they went, he now saw a call, a young lion. They ran away, but he discovered the young lion was helpless. So he went and carried the lion. And then he took the call home. And the call began to grow with the sheep. Grow with the sheep. Until he became a giant lion. But every time he lived comfortably with the sheep. Because by association, that lion thought it too was a sheep. One day they went to the brook to drink water. And this lion saw its image and ran away. All the while, when he looks at the sheep, he thinks he's the one. So he saw something for the first time that revealed its true image to it. And then it ran away from itself. They came back again to another side of the wilderness. And a lion came out of the jungle. And they, both the shepherd, the sheep, and the lion that had been with the sheep ran away. 
Most of the men of God you see and you want to touch their feet and remove their body. They are your mates in the spirit. That is who you are. That's why you desire it. But the problem is that you have grown with sheep. This lion was running until the one that came from the jungle roared. And he stopped. It's as if what that guy is saying is his language here. You understood it. The lion roared again. He turned back. That's my brother talking. For the first time, a scale fell off its eyes. And then he realized, I am not a sheep. I am a lion. And when that lion roared the third time, this lion that had been with sheep all its life, lifted its voice and when it roared, the whole wilderness vibrated. And that day it ceased from being a sheep and it became a lion indeed and it went into the jungle. Some of you have feared prayer because you think you don't have the stamina to pray. It's a lie. What you don't know is that you may be a prophetic intercessor. That's why the only thing that troubles you is prayer. But you think prayer can be prosecuted in the energy of the flesh. Some of you are preachers, but you are afraid. Every time they say, come and take the mic, that day you will come to church late. You have not found yourself. When you find yourself in the spirit, you will make your way to the altar. The Bible spoke about Abraham. He was with his family. He thought it's about family. Let's live together and die together. God came. He said, leave your king country. Leave your kindred. Leave your family to the land that I will show you. When Abraham migrated, the Bible said God took him to Sichem. In Genesis chapter 12 verse 6. From Sichem to Moreh. From Moreh to Ai. From Ai to Bethel. Sichem means shoulder. It's a place of weight and body. More means teacher. God taught him how to enter into his inheritance by bodies. He places demand on him until a point came, the guy cracked. He knew that every family advantage he had could no longer save him. It was after that time that he left Lot to, Lot to go. And then the Bible said, Abraham built an altar. At this time, he wanted to begin fraternity with heaven. Some of you believe in your uncles, your family. You believe in your gift. It will not take you anywhere. God will first of all break you. But it begins with commitment. I want to call kingdom functionaries tonight. To make commitments to God. This is the most important aspect of the meeting. Tomorrow we can do impartation and do revival. But at that point we know that there are people that have come before the immortal spirit that dwells in Zion. And have told him that, take my life. We were told stories of women like Catherine Kuma. She said, God... If you can use nothing, use me. I have nothing to offer but myself. Those are the people that shape the foundations of their world. The Bible said through faith, they subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They obtained promises. They shut the mouth of lions. They shut the fire. They quenched the violence of fire. He said weak men were made valiant in strength. And he said they put to flight the armies of the alien. Some of them were weak men. But when they came to God, God did something to their inside. And suddenly, the feeble-hearted guy became a prophet. That thing came upon him and he became an evangelist. He can walk into the mosque. Not because it is wise to enter the mosque, but his spirit is powering him. And then in the mosque, he cries. And that mosque becomes a church. These are stories you don't hear. And the reason you don't hear them is because men that live from heaven are no longer on earth. This is why people in those days will enter into kings of captivity to preach the gospel. The story of the Moravian brothers, they sold themselves as slaves. There was no way they could enter France. The only way they could enter France was to sell themselves as slaves, collected the money, gave for charity. And they carried them into France as slaves. They knew that so long as they touched the city, the land comes under the government of God. I heard stories of men like Pa Elche. If he comes to Kano, he doesn't need to preach. All he needs to do is to remove his shoe. And as he stands on the soil of Kano, he begins to prophesy. And everything he says in Kano will come to pass. Because something has been worked into him until he is a witness. That one is a gangway from heaven to earth. Every time he talks, it is the voice of God you hear upon many waters. There is something on your inside that is bigger than your gift. But until you become an agent of the kingdom, you can't work in it. Just in case you want to make a commitment. I know some of you are prophets here. I know. But if you don't want to be a prophet only in your fellowship, there is something you will drop on the altar. They started calling me apostle. 
over seven years ago. It is not the title that makes the difference. What can God demand of you? What can you give? In the next three minutes, you want to make a commitment to God with your life. Come on. It's because of you I came to come. Elohim Adonai. Consecration that we make you. No man is made by doctrine. Consecration is what makes men in this kingdom. God is looking to raise an army in this generation. You want to be part of that army? Go ahead and submit your life to God now. Tell me. This is not to make a man a poor man. That's not the idea. But this is coming to a place where whatever God demands, you can give him. Paul said, I have known how to abound and to abase. I know poverty, I know plenty. He said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. You cannot do all things unless you know how to abound and to abase. If all you know is how to hinge to prosperity, you will not amount to much in this kingdom. As we begin to pray now, some of you will find yourself crying. The angels will begin a strange ministration. I always tell people it's not about the sound, not the volume, it's the supply of the spirit. If it's about the sound, if you leave the fellowship, the sound ends. But there is a song of song that plays in our spirit man, where we know the waters of life that flows from the throne and make it glad the city of God make contact with Zion. Spirits walk from the point of your concentration. Tell the Lord. Use me for your glory. I submit everything to you. I refuse to have right over everything I have. Everything I have it, it belongs to you. I am only a trust. I'm a trust. Will you commit your anointing? I'm a trust. It's not for my benefit. Will you give me money? It's a trust.
meeting intercessors. Intercessors. There are three things that will happen. Some of you will be slain. Some of you will cry and break down as if you are a baby. And some of you, your tongue, fire will come on your tongue now. You begin to pray in tongues. You can't hold yourself. Holy Spirit. We are the intercessors. Stretch your hand, Lord. And touch them. River
Stop praying. Tonight is not a violent night. Stop praying. Just focus on Jesus. Focus. Some of you, balls, literal balls of fire will hit your chest. Some of you will find yourself wailing, wailing, wailing. It will be a strange kind of cry. Not the way you cry normally. Those are the kinds of cry that best revival. The Bible said on Zion travail, she brought forth wailing, wailing. Intercessors that can move the hand of God. Light bearers. People that do business in deep waters. And so Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, break upon us now. Break upon us. 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 Intercessors, arise. Somebody is receiving a promotion. Somebody is receiving a spiritual promotion. This person I speak about is coming into angelic simulation. You will know before it happens. Interactions in heavenly places. Angelic, angelic simulation. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Just be calm, be calm, be calm, be calm. Lord, the one that you are bringing this promotion, let your hand come upon that one. And let that alignment pattern be established. Holy Spirit, 
Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Bring that activation now. Bring that activation now. Bring that activation. Bring that activation. Ushers, just watch a bit. This one will be a bit violent. I didn't intend that for today. Anybody that the hand of God is already on, just quickly guide so that uh, we keep the deck on. Activation, 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 activation. Thank you, Father. God wants to pour oil in somebody's palm. This is a sign that is giving you authority against the demonic realm. Whatever the contradiction is in the lives of people, your hand carries the cure. Father, whoever it is you are anointing now, in this calm but highly intense atmosphere, let that oil begin to drop on that person. The oil. The oil. The oil. In fact, you will feel the sensation. You will feel it. You will feel it. The oil. The oil of activation. To frustrate the works of the devil. Precious Father. Let that oil drop now. Let the oil drop now. I release it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the okay, the Lord has said. The oil drop. Just help the brother so that um, keep it calm. There are three of you here. You have seen visions, visions, where you were warring against creatures that are aliens. Warring against aliens in your visions. Just wave at me. Wave at me. I'm seeing three hands. One. Two. Where's the third person? Wave at me. Okay. Just lift your hands toward him. You are part of the army that God is raising. Meanwhile, it's not for the people that have seen it. Because you may not see, but you are part of the ordination. Sight is only an advantage. Father, there is a weight of glory that is coming upon a few of you as a sign. That that army, part of you are in this congregation. Holy Spirit... Let me see your face and your glory, Lord. Let me know you more. There is a place my heart cries out There is a place. Oh, 
let God release a portion of his glory upon your life for service that realm that causes God himself to walk in our camp Father these ones came out because they want to commit their lives eternally to you I ask that you release that ability of your spirit now that ability of your spirit that makes men become warriors warriors able to stand and able to fight in the face of battle just be calm just be calm just be calm the glory itself will pick you up and your responses will be different your responses will be different some of you it will be so heavy you can't bear it you will want to fall down you will, you will struggle to stand not that you are really slain you will bear it as a weight because it is a mantle of God Lord let the glory begin to descend on your people some of you will you, <laughs> you, will, you will become like an imbecile what, what's happening you, you, you are just what's happening to me you don't you are overwhelmed it's a glory is the glory is an election of grace holy spirit 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 release that weight release that weight release that weight anybody that can't hold it just have the person quietly so we don't distort the decor holy spirit the glory the glory descends the glory the glory the glory men of war men of war women of war Rise from our rank, women of war. The glory, the glory, the glory is still descending like a river. It is descending, it's sitting into this place. But very soon, most of you will be drowned. You will be drowned. You will be drowned. You will be drowned. It's a move of God's spirit. It's a move of the spirit. It's a move of the spirit. The glory comes. The glory comes as the waters cover the sea. As the waters cover the sea. As the waters cover the sea. We are the ones who are numbered in our land. Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God. I'm up here as men that are perfect for the war. Captains of 50. Captains of 100. Captains of thousands. Lord. Number them. 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 Number them, number them. I insist. Holy Spirit, number them, number them. Captains, 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 captains. The glory, 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 the glory. It's coming, it's coming upon you. Most of you are elected by Zion. He ceases to shine. He ceases to shine. The glory. The glory. Oh my God. 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 The glory of God. It's an election. It's an election. It's an election. It's an election. Different things happening to different people. Because our job descriptions are different. Some of you to be on your palm. Some of you to be upon your body. Like a garment. 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 Like Look at that sister. Walk in ordination.
calm because I'm obeying instruction. See, there are three of you here that a garment of fire will come on you now. You will become wise. Praise the Lord. That was awesome. Once again, it's my privilege to be here this morning to bring us the word of the Lord. I appreciate our daddy in the house, God's servant, the chaplain, Reverend Msa E.E. Ayo. Thank you for, for having your great grandson. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Also appreciate the assistant chaplain, Reverend Steve Ogbonna. Such a great honor. And of course, the chairman of council and all the elders. Thank you for encouraging our generation to take after you in pursuit of the Lord to fulfill his will in our day and time. This morning again, I want to look at the scriptures to understand what the emphasis of God is for us in this present time. Just in case you are expectant, can you lift up your hands toward heaven and say something to the Lord? You are expectant this morning. The Bible said the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. That means the provisions of God flows in the direction of your expectations. A man without expectation is a man that we have little or nothing from God. This is why we come hungry. The prophet said to the widow, they gather vessels, they gather not a few. Just in case she took him for granted, the Bible said when the vessels were filled, the oil in the crew stopped flowing. This morning I welcome you to enlarge your heart to receive from God. Thank you, Father. We give you praise, we give you glory. We ask that you minister to us again by your spirit. That your word will come alive. And it will become the empowerment that we have to confront the darkness of our generation. In order to bring the light of your countenance. Even in the name of Jesus Christ we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Channels of my spirit, open up. I am with the Father, open up. No boundaries, no limits, open up. Let deep call unto deep, open up. Channels of my spirit open up. I am with the Father open up. No boundaries, no limits open up. Let deep call unto deep open up. Imole deo ukuku parada Imole deo ukuku parada Imole deo ukuku parada Imole deo ukuku parada Where's darkness at the sight of the light? It evaporated at the gleams of light. You know, certain songs are not just songs. They are declarations of worship in recognition of the eternal counsel and excellency of God. So when we sing these songs, they become expression of the life of God from our spirit to the very height of Zion. Some men register their presence in heaven. 
You can be on earth, but you will not appear in the radar of heaven. There are strategic and well-defined means of making contact with Zion. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' precious name, you may be seated. I don't know how the youths came about the theme of the conference. But the theme of the conference is a sign that the youth of the church are aligned and they have understanding of the present revelation position of the Spirit of God. There are many things that can be emphasized per time. But what defines accuracy in our emphasis is now our ability to discern what God is doing in a season. Every emphasis in themselves are not wrong. But what we count and strike a chord that is eternal in scope is in our understanding of the present revelation position of the spirit. So the Bible said the sons of Isaac. They were men that understood the times and the seasons and knew what Israel ought to do. So knowing what Israel ought to do was a function of discernment. There were the Levites, there were the priests that read and recited the Torah for the people of God. But knowing what Israel ought to do was a function of discernment. So we saw that generations came and generations went until prophecies were given from heaven but in the seasons of manifestation the body could not discern Jesus showed up into the world. The Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees, who were custodians of revelation, could not discern that this season was the season of the appearing of the Messiah. So they kept on with politics. They kept on with religious activities. They could not discern. Even when Jesus was brought to the temple, they could not recognize him. Only few in that generation had discernment to know that the prophecy that lasted for 700 years, this was the time of its fulfillment. Their lifestyle was different. The Bible spoke of Anna, the prophetess, that gave herself to prayer and fasting until she was 84 years old. Why she was so committed to prayer and fasting was simply because she discerned that nobody in that generation will be relevant until they play the part in the coming of the Messiah. And her own responsibility was prayer and fasting. And when Jesus came, she was in the temple. Because she had a part. Simeon, the prophet, gave himself to prayer. And he was in the synagogue all his life. When Jesus showed up as a baby, the Bible said he was praying. But he was led into the temple by the Spirit. The Holy Ghost himself came and dragged him. Saying, no, the hour has come. The reason for this kind of lifestyle and disposition you have chosen is because you discern that the Messiah is coming. Now the Messiah is here, come up. And he was dragged. He came. Of all the children that were being dedicated, he saw Jesus, he knew. He said, this is the salvation of Israel. John discerned that this season was the coming of the Messiah. So even though his father was a priest, he didn't follow the order of the priesthood. The Bible said in Luke 180, he was in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth unto Israel. Because his own responsibility in that generation was to be the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. It was not because staying in the wilderness is a doctrine, but he found his place. So it altered his priorities. It altered his lifestyle. It altered his disposition. By all means... For him to be able to fulfill the counsel of God, which was written as a code on the tablet of his heart before the foundation of the world, was his kind of alignment on the earth realm. And only in the wilderness was that quality of alignment achievable. So he went to the wilderness. When he came out, he was a voice. 
they say who are you he didn't say i am john the son of zacharias he said i am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness they knew what the season was about and here again we are in a transition season where god wants to raise men that will bear the burden of the kingdom that will receive scepters of authority to advance the frontiers of his kingdom many places today emphasis is about what they can get from god they have not discerned but this is a generation of people that know that god is looking for a people that will bear witness for his name so we came up with a team living epistles you can be many things at this time but discernment will make you know that the only way you can be relevant in zion is to be a living epistle some of us are students some of us are businessmen some of us are footballers like you saw them came in but we will not be relevant as footballers we will not be relevant as students we will not be relevant as businessmen until we become what living epistles because there is a move of god that is coming to the borders of our habitation you may become big on earth but very tiny in heaven that's the greatest risk of life that on earth men clap for you but the angels don't know you but men of discernment their lifestyle is governed by the signals that flow from the command tower of heaven and on the strength of that signal everything that happened to them in time counts for nothing so the bible will say paul and barnabas he said these be the men that hazarded their lives for the gospel they discerned the seasons they lived in and in heaven they became mighty men so god began to reveal to us what it meant to be a living epistle it is impossible for a spirit to be seen on earth the only way you can see and identify a spirit on earth is when a mortal vessel embodies the reality of that spirit so a living epistle is not a preacher of the word of god a living epistle is not a reciter of the bible a living epistle is a man that is able to embody the totality of the essence of god and communicate the same to his generation he may communicate it through words he may communicate it through his lifestyle but by all means he must become a custodian of the life of god how do we know and identify demons is through the character of the people that are possessed by those demons so you see a man who is littered with all kinds of uncleanness you know that this is an unclean spirit nobody except by discernment of spirit have ever seen a demon but all of us know demons by looking at the people that possess demons so you see somebody possessed by the spirit of immorality her dress will speak it louder she doesn't need to say i carry the spirit of immorality her words will communicate it the song she sings will communicate it why she has become an embodiment of that spirit when you see a madman you don't need to find out you know this is what an unclean spirit looks like because that madman is an embodiment of that spirit so God designs it such a way that even though his dimensions are locked up in heaven, every time they look upon you and I, they should not say this is Victor. When they see you, they should see Jesus. That's a living episode. So you can walk into the lecture hall. People will not see a lecturer. They will see Jesus. You are teaching biochemistry. But through biochemistry, Jesus is communicated because you have become a living episode businessman in the market when they contact you they contact jesus you have become a living episode this is the only way our world can be colonized the reason the number of churches are growing the number of prophets the number of apostles are growing but the territory is not affected is because we are religious people we come to church and act like god but when we go out there our true reality is representative of different spirits we become people that pursue money pursue pleasure pursue all kinds of things and that is what our our territory has as a testimony of the kinds of people that are in the generation there are no living episodes anymore so this morning we began to look at what it takes to be a living episode we said the first thing it takes is to interact with the word of god because according to the nature of the word of god the bible said that word that was made flesh is the life and that life is the light that lighted every man that comes into the world 
So even though we were born in sin into a corrupt world, when we begin to interact with the word of God, the Bible says the word of God will become life on our inside. And the moment the word of God becomes life on our inside, it reflects through us as light. When that is achieved, I'm trying to do a quick recap before I hit the next point. Because it's a second service. When that is achieved, I said there are three things that is implicative of that reality. The first is that we become witnesses. There can be no witness on earth unless we have first of all become living epistles. This is why we preach the gospel so loud, yet the impact is not on ground. Because we are not what we preach. The Bible said concerning Jesus, while Luke was writing to Theophilus in Luke chapter 1 verse 2, he said of all that Jesus both began to do and to teach. So he had no authority to teach except as he had become. So it took him 30 years to become and three and a half years to teach. John chapter 19 verse 22, he said for their sakes I sanctify myself so that they too might be sanctified. So if Jesus spoke to you, even if he's not talking sanctification, you'll be purged. So he said, the words I have spoken to you have washed you. Why? Because he has first of all become the reality of sanctification. When we become living epistles, the first dimension of God that breaks out of us is that we become witnesses on earth. A witness is the proof that God exists. There's no, word, there's no way the world will believe that God exists unless you have become that proof that God exists. And the world is not only interested in knowing what you have to say. They are looking at you to see what you express as a lifestyle. So the reason it looks as if the world doesn't believe in God is because there are no sufficient witnesses. Every time the devil shows up, the devil is making a statement that God doesn't exist. So all our interaction is to prove to the world that the devil is a liar. Because when you see sickness, the devil is saying God does not exist. Why? Because God said, everyone that believes is healed. So you now see a believer who is sick. The devil is saying God is a liar. But when a witness shows up, he enforces what God has spoken. So if you see him that was sick become well, then it's a proof that the God that said the believer is healed is real. The devil comes to make it look as if it's impossible to live righteously because this world belongs to him. Then you look upon a man and you check him. There is no sin. That man is making a statement that God is real. Every time the devil comes to force you into sin, he's trying to get you concord with him. Receive your agreement that God is not real. So every time you commit that sin, you are in agreement with the devil that God is not real. But our rebellion against the devil is a statement in the spirit that we are telling the world that our God is real. The world will not believe when you tell them he's real unless you are able to demonstrate that which is consistent with his reality. A witness. We may be on earth. We think this is a religious activity. When the heavens are open, then you understand that what we are talking about is a politics that takes place in the heights of the heavens. The Bible spoke about Job in Job chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. He said there is a man of us in the regions of the east. He said he feared God and eschewed evil. He feared God and eschewed evil. And in heaven, the devil came to God. Let's prove what you are saying, if it's true. And in verse 6, he said, if he strikes Job and takes everything he has, he will not believe in you. Because Job is not really a witness. And God said, go ahead. And the devil went, took everything Job had, and Job still stood. The devil came, Job 2 verse 1. He says, skin for skin, a man will give everything for his skin. God said, go, strike his bone and his flesh, and his flesh, but don't kill him. The devil went, struck him, Job still stood. So Job made a statement in immortality that life is not a function of possession. Life is not a function of self. That life in itself is giving expression to the life of God. The will of the Father living out through a mortal entity is the proof that is alive. And that kind of life becomes a witness. His life was a proof that God is real. And those kinds of men will say God himself make a boast of them. God doesn't brag with you because you are, you are an accountant. He doesn't brag with you because you are a doctor. He only brags with you because you are a witness. So when he sent his son into the world, he could send him as a lawyer. He could send him as a doctor, but he sent him as a witness. Because that's the only kind of life that resonates in Zion. 
but unfortunately most of us don't understand the implication so we live for ourselves and the bible says him that liveth in pleasure is dead even while he walketh breathing oxygen for 90 years but you were dead from heaven from the day you were born because you never appeared in the radar of heaven and when we looked at the life of the patriarchs of old that God wrote about them we discovered that there was nothing written about their lives until they became witnesses Moses was in Egypt for 40 years nothing was written about him the day Moses became a witness the angels that were the scribes of his destiny began to write Noah lived for more than 120 years nothing written about him until when he said God speak and he moved with fear the scribes began to write so a man who has not become a witness there is no document about him in Zion so you want to be relevant eternally the first point of reference is to become an agent that brings God to the scene it's easy to live in sin it takes the life of God to live a righteous life it's easy to fight it's easy to gossip it's easy to, ma to keep malice it's easy to steal it's easy to fornicate but it takes the life of God to do otherwise so whenever men see you doing otherwise they will say this person is not normal this one is a God among men because this lifestyle only gods live that way so when they saw the believers in Antioch they said these ones are little Christ but today we enter our territories I went for visa interview and I saw more than three clergymen they were on their they, were, they wore their <laughs> the cassock and everything was there to create the impression that they were they were men of God but in the days of the fathers when they spoke to you God will enter your spirit they didn't need to wear any garment Peter came out and when he spoke he said 3,000 people were pricked in their heart they said men and brethren what shall we do to be saved they want people to look at the earthly garment but the witness is insufficient I heard a story about Reinhard Bonke he went to South Africa to buy something and he stood at the shop while he was talking to the man selling the man began to cry and he asked God why is he crying and God told him he saw me in your eyes he was not talking he was emitting God as an energy this kind of man God is jealous for them he's jealous he's jealous God will fight their battles because so long as God will be known on earth if God will ever be known on earth it's because those kind of men are still walking on the earth God looked at the earth at one point and it was as if there was no witness and he said in Genesis chapter 6 from verse 5 he said it repented God that he made the earth and God said he will wipe out the whole earth including man, beast and everything that is on the earth because the earth itself is not valuable the earth is not relevant the earth is not needed except that they are witnesses but when he looked again saw one man and he said God found favor grace with Noah Noah found grace with God and because of one witness the whole earth was preserved and God will not destroy the earth because of one man a witness you want to be relevant with God and gain eternal ranking and stature where it begins from is to stand for him the world is in darkness we need light to shine and then we saw that what God is also doing in us is to build us up as his house so Paul said in 1 Corinthians 3 9 said that we are God's building and I say you look at that scripture and you take it for granted and you think it's a theological piece until when the realm of eternity is open that is when you will discover that the house Paul said he meant it because when the new Jerusalem appeared the Bible revealed to us that everybody that lived as a witness on earth is a block in that building so he said the name of the 12 apostles of the Lamb in Revelation chapter 21 verse 14 was in the foundation of the new Jerusalem. So their life, everything God was doing with them was part of that structure that God was raising. And I told us this is where sometimes it becomes a bit difficult. When God tries to shape and chisel a man so that he can fit into the building, that's where it becomes difficult. That's where God shows up and tells you because he has checked your heart there is lost for money so after you gather the money for one year he said carry the money go and put it in the offering basket don't even tell the pastor he shouldn't be aware then you now discover that what you say you the love of God that you quote is on your lips it's not in your heart meanwhile it's not because God wants you to favor the church God is building you as a stone that he will use in his house 
lust that is in your heart for money will not allow you fitting because that lust will always make you oblong you will not have a place in that house and the only way god can break that lust is to destroy that thing which your flesh anchors on so he tells you take the money you will wonder for three weeks why you may drop that one another one comes lost is still there say drop it i got up as a young man because i read the bible and i could speak english i stood up i said we will, we will shake this world <laughs> I was in one spot for 13 years. For 13 years, we were preaching in Makodi. You have all the publicity on Facebook. When you upload it, you see three likes. So I now realize that in this kingdom, social media doesn't make men. Only God makes a man. I know a lot of my friends now because they saw see us traveling everywhere. Even if they cough or they gather three people, they put it on Facebook. They think it's Facebook that make men. You will be buried at the backside of the wilderness until God shapes you. Because what God is doing, He's building a house in Zion. And when God raises a man, even if He talks for five minutes, somebody will hear it in Afghanistan and repent. Because He has become an echo of Zion. So Peter said, We are lively stones. We are lively stones. God is chiseling our soul because the infrastructure He's building, some of us will be pillars. Some of us will be the foundation. Some of us will be the edge of the wall. But the garbage of the fall cannot allow us fitting. So God will come to chisel us. Every man that God ever used and had eternal relevance, God trimmed him in the wilderness. John was to be a voice. It was possible for him to sit in his father's house and go out and say the Messiah is coming. <laughs> he was carried to the wilderness. When he came out from the wilderness, he had no value for anything anymore. His life was perpetually an errand from the father. Everywhere he went, he kept crying. He kept crying. You can't, you can't please that kind of man with money and position anymore. Because when God shaped him, the only thing that echoes on the tablet of his, of his soul is what God spoke concerning him before the foundations of the world. This is where competition dies in the church. I'm not hustling to be on the microphone. When I checked with God, after I was streamed, I discovered my place was to be an intercessor. So I may come for the service when people are coming up with suit and shining. I am at the back in the room praying somewhere that the hand of God will come. If I see the hand of God, I'm satisfied. You may never know the intercessor and he may never climb the pulpit all his life in the church. But he knows his place because he has been chiseled. Even when you give him the microphone, he will tell you, no, 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 no. I don't know. Thank you. What somebody else who is full of flesh is struggling. He thinks he is he's in the choir. You have not told her to lead song for three weeks. So the next day she will not greet you. Because she thinks it's, a, it's about a show. But a man who has been tried. He only does what the father wants to do. And every time he's in the hand of God is a battle axe. That's the kind of man that can come up and sing a song for five minutes. And somebody falls down crying and repenting. The person didn't know what he or she heard. But life was communicated. Because that person is a lively stone. God can shoot him as a weapon of war. He can enter a territory. And then he just in his house praying. And then one person joins him. Two people join him. Fifty people join him. And a move of God begins. Because the one who is talking. Every time he lifts his voice. is an echo in Zion. He's a lively stone. God can depend on that one. Because he has been tried. He said in Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 10. He said I the Lord. I try the heart. And I test the rings. To give to every man as his way it should be. The preacher who is making wave. Is not making wave because he's an orator. He's a tried stone. I lay in Zion. A precious stone. Him that believe will not make haste. He can stay until God choose to launch him. And when he's launched, he's a witness. And I said, Thirdly, when we become witnesses and lively stones, then God invests authority in our lives. One of the most precious commodities you will have in time is authority. This is why the people in darkness, they fight, they kill, they sacrifice to gain authority. Because they know without authority, no purpose can ever be fulfilled. You can have the best interest to change Calabar. If you don't have authority, it will never happen. It will die with you. This is why the people in darkness, they are experts of these things. Men can kill their children to have authority. Because they know nothing happens in time unless it is backed with authority. But believers... We never yield themselves to God so that authority can be invested in their lives. We come around with gifts and charisma. So we are superficial. 
when we talk, it doesn't echo in the spirit realm. The demons can't hear. The principalities can't hear. We gather together, we are praying and shouting. Let the land change. They don't hear. There's no authority. But authority is only invested when we become lively stones. God knows how to chisel a man. Yours may be pride. God will deal with it until he crashes. Jacob was the only custodian of the Abrahamic blessing. As the son of Abraham. That Isaac released the blessings upon. Everything God promised Abraham was resting on Jacob's head. But it will never come to pass. Until he was broken. And he wrestled with the angel all night. When the angel could not handle the matter anymore. He touched his thigh bone and broke him. And when he was broken he said as a prince. Thou hast power with God and with men. And has prevailed. That was when Jacob rose up. And became a custodian of authority. At that time. Jacob doesn't need to struggle. For the dynasty of Abraham to, enco encap to cover the earth anymore. He will show up and say gather around me you sons of Israel. And I will tell you the things that will happen to you. That's a man of authority talking. If he says you are blessed. It doesn't matter. You can go to a land where there is no food or water. You will prosper. They know how to dominate the earth. They know how to rule over the earth. They know it's, the, it's by the wisdom of authority. So Abraham will bless Isaac with the name of El Shaddai. Isaac was in Gera. Everybody was running to Egypt to survive. And God says, stay still in Gera. And the Bible said that same year, he sowed and he reaped a hundredfold harvest. How do you reap a hundredfold harvest in the dry ground? Authority backs you up. We are people without authority because we live for ourselves. When we are not witnesses, God will be lost from our world. When we are not witnesses, God will be lost from our families. When we are not witnesses, God will be lost from our lives. This is why the devil has authority to plague many families. Not because he's strong, there are no witnesses. When you rise up, the tyranny of darkness ends. When there are no witnesses, the people of this world will not find God. And they will be justified. This is why you have many atheists everywhere. Not because God is not real. There are no witnesses. They looked for God. They couldn't find him. They only met liars. Men that told them about God with so much verbosity. But when time came to demonstrate God, God was not found. When there are no lively stones, then there will be no relevance in Zion. So what makes you and I relevant in Zion is not because we accepted Jesus. What makes us relevant in Zion is the degree to which we are pliable in the hands of God. He chisels us and he gives us our place. Judas was one of the twelve, but he could not be chiseled. So even though Jesus told them they will sit on twelve thrones to judge the twelve tribes of Israel, Judah lost his seat. Because until a man can be chiseled by God, he doesn't have a place in eternity. And when there is no authority, the purpose of God cannot be fulfilled in time. This is not a bid to make us poor, to make us poor, to make us weak and vulnerable. This is just a way of showing us how God honors and ranks men the bible spoke of many mighty men in scriptures but in hebrews chapter 11 from verse 33 down to 37 he began to speak of some certain people and when he went down he said some of them were sown asunder he said this kind of men the world is not worthy of their name it's when you get to heaven that you will know the men that are truly mighty on the earth you will think men are mighty on the earth because they speak to ten thousand when you go to heaven, you will see the men that are truly mighty. Some of them, they, their names were not mentioned on earth. It's in Zion you will see them. Fourthly, this morning, I want to add one more. Because I want us to pray. At least for 10 minutes. Ah! Time is a body. When we become witnesses and lively stones in the hand of God, then God is at liberty to place the blessings upon us. When men truly prosper. Is when their prosperity comes from God. And there are many indicators that a man is blessed. When we look at, at the life of the men that God tried. We saw the nature of blessings that God gave them. The first kind of blessing God gives them is that. They become rulers among men. And kings come from their loins. He said to Abraham. In Genesis chapter 17 verse 6 and verse 16, he said, kings will come out of thee. That's not a man trying to be mighty. It is from him that mighty men are born. And I will make of thee exceeding fruitful. 
and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee you want to end insignificance in your lineage the path to follow is not to run after a politician I tell you you will waste your destiny there are many young people here you want to end insignificance in your lineage the path to follow is the path of dealing where God makes a man because when your making process is complete you become a progenitor of kings and rulers this is what makes insignificant men become mighty if you trace back the history of men shaking this world today some of them 30 years ago they were nobodies but it is God that exhorts men he makes one to rise and he brings another down what is what compels God to make a man it is the pathway of making the process that God carries you through when your soul is chiseled God can trust you and then he can invest his power in your life in verse 16 he said even your wife Sarah he said kings will come out of her when a man follows God and allows God to chisel him and to make him that man now suddenly have authority over rulers in this world see why men fraternize with spirits there are certain men that are never and will never be governors of this state but until they say this is the governor he can never be governor they are king makers they sit in their house and they determine what happens in the state you may pass by and think they are ordinary people you don't know where they are standing in the spirit realm some of them are in league with principalities and powers some of them are in league with rulers of darkness so you may not see anything about them but they follow the law of that spirit some of them for 15 years every night between 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. they sleep in a coffin because that's the law that spirit gave them and if they obey that law there cannot be a governor in your state unless they say this will be the governor the same way we can become king makers but the possibility will only lie if we come under the government of God if we become lively stones a point comes when God can make us to determine the things that happen in our territory a kind of authority that you have never experienced will be conferred upon your life and you will marvel you will marvel I know these things by experience when I speak about a witness I know it by experience committed myself to pray for the city of Makodi for eight months and I was in prayer until I didn't know what I was doing at some point because when you begin naturally you will struggle because every connection between you and the world will first of all be broken I struggled with the prayer for some time until I hit a cruise mode and I didn't know that at that point everything I was doing was resonating in the spirit realm until one day I sat I laid on the ground praying in my room and then a being walked out of the wall I thought demonology was theology <laughs> a being walked out of my wall and I was not in the trance my eyes were open I tried to jump up that was when I discovered I was immobilized and this being was a woman naked carrying a red apron on her shoulder and it, she walked around me I kept struggling to rise I couldn't and when she came close to me I looked I discovered her head was the head of a man that was when I knew that immorality in Benway State was under the prince of perversion. A point came when the, the being paid me a visit because maybe I didn't know the realm where I was transacting. And when she came, whether she or he, now sat on my chest. I tried to push this personality, no way. And now tried to bite her on the back. Did you even notice somebody was touching her? That was when I realized the importance of scriptures. When they say, they that name the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now say, Jesus save me. And light, light came out of the ceiling and scattered this being and the being dematerialized. For the first time, and I understood that whenever you call the name of Jesus, it was not a theological act. It was not a religious activity. You are actually engaging the supernatural. If you do it, a point will come when you will see things in the spirit realm. You will now understand the things that govern your family why things happen in your family God will take you beyond the veil to reveal it to you for two weeks every gear I saw I wanted to hug her because I made contact with the principality of perversion I understood that these things were real God wanted to raise me 
I taught becoming a popular preacher was about memorizing scriptures. I memorized scripture for many years. Nothing happened until I committed myself to prayer and told God, whatever you have me do, I will do. And when I prayed for a long time, suddenly in the place of prayer, the wall of my room vanished and I saw my compound in the village. What is the meaning of this? Instantly, I saw two creatures. One of them had ten horns. The other one looked like a creature that was exhumed from the grave. I could see through the bones. And fear gripped me. What is this? And he said, these are the principalities that rule the destiny of men in your family. I said, I thought I was born again. Whoever is in Christ Jesus is a new creation. I didn't know the laws that govern the spirit realm. He said, whoever you yield yourself, servant to obey, the servant of him you are, even if you are a believer, because Paul was writing to believers. And he said, these guys, their authorities enacted through four gates. One is pride. Two, immorality. Three, lying. Four is drunkenness. He said, if you avoid these things, they will not have authority over you. So I say, wow. So even if I'm a preacher, a principality can manipulate me. Yes, if I violate the laws that govern the spirit realm. I understood what it meant to be a witness. So now you can come for a meeting and say, Jesus love you and go home. People will have encounters. Most times I come for meeting, I talk about prosperity and I tell people, God will break their heart now and people begin to cry because I have entered into realms of authority. A man who comes under this government, God gives him, God gives him authority over kings and rulers. Enlargement is a function of yieldedness. You don't become a living epistle, you have nothing to say about God. You may read about him, you may hear somebody talk about him and utter the same, you are joking. A point came. I was following Bishop Oedeko so close. I could decode. I could encode and decode his messages. And quote all the scriptures he quoted. But the more I quoted, the more I suffered and languished in pain. Until I heard a story. He said he went to the mountain to pray and fast for three days. And on the third day, an angel appeared to him and said, Today I have taught your tongue with the coal of fire. As you say, that is what you see. And now knew why some men go to the shrine. They speak, they shrine, go down. Others go to the shrine, they speak, they are paralyzed. It's not because God is not strong. There is no pliability in the hand of the Holy Spirit. I now knew why three people would go for interview. One of them came early, answered all the questions. They collected the CV and threw away. Meanwhile, somebody else came late and they collected the CV. They say, go home and give him the job. Manipulations in the heavenlies. You want to have authority among men. You must become a, a perpetual personality on earth that fraternizes with spirit. That's when God makes you a ruler. You bet kings and you command kings. You tell them what to do. A point comes in your life when you are going somewhere and you say, this is what will happen. And it will happen. Because I am the Lord that performed the words of my servant and confirmed the counsel of my messengers. The fathers of old knew these things. So Elijah will go to tell the king in his palace and say so long as I live not so long as God live there shall be no rain or dew except according to my word he knows what it means to become a puppet in the hand of God when a man becomes a puppet in the hands of God he's a ruler among men he can speak and even the kings of the earth will bow to him the reason why we don't have influence and empowerment is because we are not sufficiently submitted to the government of God thirdly when a man does this God himself blesses him. God himself is committed to blessing him. You see certain men, God is jealous about them. You wonder, is God biased? No. They know the buttons to press in the spirit realm. And when you press those buttons, God has no choice. For instance, all the men we spoke about here, like Abraham, like Job. In Job 42 verse 10, the Bible said, the Lord visited Job again and he gave him double for everything he had lost. Because he had passed the test. Enlargement. You see certain men breaking forth on every side. Don't go and envy them. You may do the same thing they are doing. You are weary. Because it's a labor of the foolish. He said the labor of the foolish weary at every man of them. Because they know not how to enter the city. The man is not a millionaire because he's a professor. Go and study and become a professor. And you will see that millions don't come to you because you are a professor. The man is not a millionaire because he's trading shoes. Go and start shoe business. You will stop. That's why you see certain people, they do five business in ten years. They don't know that this thing is a function of fraternity with spirits. Fraternize with the spirit. That spirit is committed to blessing you. It is a law in the spirit realm. You want God to bless everything you do. You must first of all come under his government. We do what we do and we want God to place his blessing upon it. It's a joke. 
there are men that God himself is committed to bless. God himself. In Psalm 112, verse 1 to 3, he said, Praise be ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. Delighted greatly in his commandment. And then you see enumeration. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. He said, Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And his righteousness endureth forever. Who is that man? The man that feared the Lord and delighted greatly in his commandment. If prosperity is far from your quarters, it's because you have not come under government. It doesn't matter what you do. You will reduce to nothing. Men that have their riches and their prosperity and their righteousness enduring forever. He said there are people that, are, that fear the Lord. They delight in his commandment. The word of the Lord is their greatest delight. Such men have no choice but to be mighty. I heard Bishop Oedeko say something some time ago and I said, how can a man talk like this? I said, is this correct? I became afraid I was praying for him. <laughs> he said, even if I want to be poor now, it's too late. You will hear, you think it's arrogance. He knows the key. He said, even if I want to. He now made a statement. He said, I'm not surprised where we are today. If we were not, I would have been surprised. Eh? A man is prospering. He is unapologetic about it. Because he knows the laws of the spirit realm. God himself is committed to fulfilling it. Because he spoke it. And he is under his own laws. He, under, he deliberately chose to stay under his word. Men that move the hand of God. They are men that understand secrets that govern the realm. In Exodus 29, 29. He said the secret things belong to God. But the things that are revealed. They belong to us and to our children forever. The secret of eternal prosperity is to come under the government of the Messiah. He will furnish you with inspiration. He will cause men to lose their peace, but to bless you. No wonder I say your sons and your daughters will come from afar. Strangers will stand to build your wall. How come? There is something working in your life. Something working in your life. People will look at you and just want to bless you. If you ask them, they don't know why. There is something at work. You have traded with the economy of the spirit to a level where even the realm have no choice but to obey you. The secret of everlasting prosperity is the fear of the Lord. His brokenness is to stay under the government of God. Quit laboring. Your effort cannot make you prosper. It is the blessing of the spirit that is upon your life that will make you prosper. Go and ask everybody that made it in this world. There is a spirit they fraternize with. There is a threshold you cannot go beyond unless you come under a government of a spirit. Whether in light or in darkness. He said it is the blessings of God that make it rich and added no sorrow to it. So this thing is not just about eternity, eternity, eternity. Even in time, this is how it works. You cannot be big in time unless you are under the government of a spirit. There is nothing like luck and chance in time. Everything in time is orchestrated. Wise men don't wait for those things anymore. They know how to make it happen. So they live their lives daily making things happen in their favor. When they speak, their voices become like the voice of a spirit. That's why the Bible says when we speak, we should speak as the custodians of the oracles of God. This afternoon, I want us to bow our heads and pray. Every one of us know the areas of rebellion. I say always that these things are not doctrines. These things are consecration based. Wherever you are today in this world, if you are not under the government of the Holy Ghost, it's a, it's a, it's a risk. Paul was telling Timothy, he says not to exhort the novice. Because when he becomes great, that is when the devil will attack him and make a mess of him. You may have lived by luck and chance and now you are 30 years, you are 50 years and you say, but I have prospered. The Bible says there is an evil day for every man. I've seen people that raise families, children, mighty, just on their way for Christmas and they are crushed on the road. Because what they don't know is that that day was the day the devil appointed. He waited for them to become mighty. So he's, he sends a witch of 10 years old to go and do IT with them. So the IT was to clear whole family from the road. It's a risk to live in this world without the government of God. It doesn't matter what you think is happening for you. It is spirits that rule this realm. It is spirits that regulate the happenings in this realm. 
It is spirits that govern this realm. And thanks be to God, we have a free ticket to fraternize with the Holy Spirit. But when the Holy Ghost comes to us, there are different points of contacts. Some of us, the point of contact is the Holy Ghost telling us to keep sponsoring the work of the kingdom. It doesn't make sense, but it is called life in the spirit. You gave today, tomorrow we say give, next tomorrow we say give. What he's doing is that he's working on your soul so that your soul can become a lively stone. That is what will make you have a stake in Zion. Some of us is prayer. You are praying and he say keep praying. The day you want to leave, he say pray more. He's working on you. Because there's a place in Zion that you cannot stand until you obey in time. Some of us is fasting. Some of us is missions like our brother. Whatever it is, the Holy Ghost is bringing upon your life that he will not change his mind. That is the government of God that will make you eternally relevant. This is where you don't need to read the Bible to become great. Because the elders of old, when they walked with God, there were no Bibles. It was their lifestyle that became scriptures because they understood the intelligence of spiritual government. In the days of Abraham, there were no scriptures. In the days of Enoch, in the days of Noah, there were no scriptures. What they did were the things written down as scriptures for you and I. And the Bible said in Romans 15 verse 4, it said the things that were written at all time, they were written for our learning. So that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I believe that you were blessed. If um, you were blessed by this video, make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend. And also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message. If you have any question, please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you. And also if you are watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ, ask the Lord and personal Savior. I want you to make that decision. Just contact us in the description. Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.